It is the finals night before Christmas here at the Modus Live Lounge. Six players fighting to win £5,000. An audience assembled for one final peek to see who makes it through to Champions Week. And here are Saturday's Super Six. Wales's Nick Kenny was the last man to make it through, finishing third in Group B on Friday to reach his second finals night at the Live Lounge. Leonard Gates is heading to Alexandra Palace next week, the soldier looking to prepare perfectly for the world by taking the title tonight. Chris Landman was playing in the World Championship this time last year. The Dutchman has enjoyed a solid debut week at the Super Series. Alex Small won Red Dragons Champion of Champions this year, following in the footsteps of the likes of Johnny Clayton and Gerwin Price. Can he take glory? Or will it be victory for Veenstra? The second Dutchman in the field is a former World Championship semi-finalist and second favourite behind Gates to prevail. Completing the field is ADC qualifier Adam Warner, a product of the university dart scene. He's got a few friends travelled down from Sheffield tonight. Will they be heading back with the winner? Good evening. It is indeed the last night at the Super Series before Christmas and thanks for joining us for this festive finals night. Matthew Edgar alongside me, dressed for the occasion. I just have to ask you, is Simpsons on that shirt? Have you borrowed that from Paul Nicholson? He'd love this one, wouldn't he? He's a big fan of the Simpsons and it's got everything, has he? We've got Christmas, we've got the Simpsons. What more could you ask for? Well, the shirt has got everything. Let's hope the night has got everything as well. Are you expecting a few Christmas crackers? Absolutely. You could literally say any one of these six players to me right now and I could give you a valid argument for why they're going to win this and that's going to make an intriguing night. Well, you've seen who they are. Let's have a look at the groups they're in. Of course, always on Saturday nights, the players split into two groups. They'll all play each other once. The top two will go through to the semi-finals and the third place player in each group will go out. So looking at that, who are the two that you perhaps expect to fall through the trap door at the end of the group stages? Oh, that's a tricky one. Group two, though, I'm going to go with Nick Kenny. I know the SA Glenn Durant went with Alex Small, but I've been really impressed with him. And like you said, he's following in the footsteps of Johnny Clayton, Gerwin Price, Ryan Searle, some people. That champion of champions doesn't have a very long list of winners, but it's a very lucrative list. He's on that list. He's shown quality. I think he could get through that group. He's the biggest outsider of this whole tournament. I think that's wrong. Yeah, Leonard Gates, the favourite tonight. Do you think that's right? He's playing in the first match. I think it's right, but I can't say it's going to happen. Um, he's going to the World Championship, like you say, on Monday. He's going to be playing Gert Nenches. He's played quality at times. He's also been a little inconsistent at times. The thing that could catch him out is if someone comes up and plays a good level of performance against him. We have spoke about it all the time. The numbers, the counting, isn't there at the elite level. If someone comes up here tonight and plays elite level darts, which they can, in these early groups when there's only two matches to play, he could come up short. Can our ADC qualifier, Adam Warner, do that? He's had a couple of days off, one Group A, and he's got some backing here tonight. Yeah, I think 11 people coming down tonight from Sheffield University, which is great to see. And that's one of the things about this university tour. They really do back each other on there. And I'm an ambassador for that tour and that system. And I've got to say, everywhere I've been, they all get behind each other, and it's a really good community. Edgar's top pick, the prime time pick to win the evening. Uh, I don't know about the prime time pick to win one, but there's a lot of value in Alex Small to beat Nick Kenny, and I'd say that's the top tip of the night. Well, watch out for that one. Edgar has been on point with his predictions this week, as he is every week, to be fair. He's going to be joining Glenn Durant in commentary, but the first match is Leonard Gates against Adam Warner. Uh, let's hear from both players. Adam, finals night mm. on your debut here at the Super Series. How's the week been for you? Oh, it's, it's gone like an absolute dream, really. I mean, even going into Wednesday, I was thinking... Let's just shore up that top three. So I'm sort of looking behind me thinking if I have a mare here and one of the boys behind has a good day, then I could be fourth or fifth. So, yeah, just kept ticking off the games and luckily managed to come out on top. So, yeah, perfect, really. Have you found a couple of days off? Yes, yeah, a couple of days off, sort of twiddling my thumbs. But luckily there's been lots of darts on. There's been this on, there's been the alley pally. So um, it's been plenty to sort of keep myself occupied and just sort of relax and try and get myself ready for an evening session. Um, making sure I'm not still in that morning get up routine. Yeah. We've been learning a lot about your involvement in uni darts. Yeah. Just explain a little bit about that. Um, so I think the, the group that organises UD UK, so University Darts UK, and 
Um, before lockdown, it was it was sort of going. So you've got sort of regional groups where universities play each other. So it would be um, in Sheffield University, we play Sheffield Hallam, Nottingham, Nottingham Trent, Loughborough, people around that area. And it's just a day out with some friends, sort of triples matches, pairs matches. Um, and then also you'd have sort of big events, like a weekender where you play big singles events. So that'd be just carnage, really. 350 people, groups of eight or nine, playing all day. No no order, no best of orders, people shouting miss, miss, as you're throwing. Um, so, yeah, just a lot of fun. And people who are at university who want to get into darts, I'd, I'd really recommend it, or just for something fun. Yeah. And just finally, what would it be like if you could cap off that debut week with the win? Um, it, it'd, be, it'd be incredible. Um, the way I'm seeing it tonight is everything's, everything's a sort of bonus. Um, so I know I can't sort of stay with the score and some of these guys I don't really hit enough 180s for my sins but hopefully I can match it with some of the doubling and set up shots we look forward to seeing it Adam good luck lovely thank you anyway Leonard welcome to finals night on your debut here at the Super Series looking forward to it oh yeah definitely man it's uh it's been a good couple of days and uh had a lot of fun and played some good darts yeah and now we got to Saturday. The serious business is very much here and a big opportunity for the players involved here tonight. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely a good opportunity. Uh, man, I've met some awesome shooters, great players, great, uh, great gentlemen, you know. And, uh, hey, I hope to just keep it going. Ali Pali as well on the horizon for yourself. So how much would a good night here help you in that preparation for the World Championships? Oh, I think, I think it'll build the confidence going into the Ali Pali to play uh, just to see, uh, get my pregame uh, practice on here as well as trying to uh, compete as if I'm in the Ali Pali right now. <laughs> well, I wish you all the very best tonight, Leonard. You're looking forward to it, so I wish you all the best. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Glad to be here. Well, plenty of noise in the audience as Adam Warner made his way to the stage. He has brought his fans from Sheffield, part of that university dart scene. He takes on Leonard Gates, who's travelled across the Atlantic en route to the Alexandra Palace for the World Championship. Which way will this go? It's two group winners, the first of nine matches this evening. Glenn Durrant and Matthew Edgar talking you through all of them. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Good evening, everybody. The conclusion of a magnificent week eight. And it wouldn't be the Moda Super Series without the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations. It's had a bit of everything this week. But we've been graced with six man field. Very, very good field. And as Matt said, pre there on the balcony, we have a case for every single one of them. And the guy in your picture right now, what a story this would be. Probably the guy I had the least information on. Uh, the one I had the most interaction from, from his friends and family during the week. A guy who watched a game last year at the World Championships, uh, Willie Borland okay, against Bradley Brooks. To throw first. A game where Willie Borland hit the nine darter. And that inspired him to take his darts from playing in the university, playing with friends, to actually travelling. And the partnership between the ADC and the Moda Super Series was something that interested him. So he decided to travel around and uh, qualify for this Motor Super Series via that avenue. And what a performance he put on. He was up against established players, players you're going to see tonight. Chris Landman, Richard Veenstra, winners of big opens in the WDF BDO system and played at the Lakeside World Masters. And he outshone them all, very much like the first six darts he's thrown there. 100. Solid, solid, 100 after 100. And a great return on the doubles. Very clean living, very charismatic. The Dreamy Cream is his nickname. Thanks to his cream chinos. Unfortunately, he's not wearing them tonight. But what a credit he's been. Leonard Gates, Matt. Yeah, Leonard Gates, you've mentioned it and we'll keep mentioning it because it's so, so important. He's stopping here 55. on his way to London, on his way to the Alexandra Palace, where he's going to be taking on Gert Nenches on Monday. And... I would dare say he's going to give Gert Nenches a bit of a scare. One there was times 100. in his group phase on Group C on Thursday and Friday morning, it was more Thursday where he went through three games without victory, lost his last three, but then went through the card on Friday, really shown his class. 120. There is a concern, though. It's just when we're now looking at a group of winners like we are, is he going to get away with that counting issues? 
Let's try and break this down a little bit. Uh, you just had the same question. The horrible question of being asked who would not get through the groups. And I just thought, has Adam had his moment? As he looks at this one, two, six, he'll stay there for the bull. What a start this would be. Eighty-seven. Like an unenviable task, and I said it would be Adam who wouldn't get through this group. But he's proved me wrong all week, and I'm just thinking the majority of the crowd. Now the problem with Leonard Gates is his finishing, but he's he's done fine here, and it's tops for a one-nil lead. Seventy-one. Both have had opportunities and to win this first leg. Thirty-nine. But Leonard Gates, you want, might see during the night. It's his Achilles heel sometimes can be around the areas just attempted there. So thirty-nine. That leaves his favourite double 16. He does this reset each time, closes his eyes, positive visualisation. He's thinking of that dart going in double 16. Game show. Oh, that's what he did. Oh, that like that. Corner. In fact, my opening gambit when I started on Monday is how placid, how quiet. And straight away, the so Sheffield like guys were straight first. on the message to me via Game Twitter. On. Hashtag MSS darts. At does a 180 and just get some messages because the feedback I got from them. He's not quiet, he's an absolute character. In fact, he's even got the Warner shuffle. Yeah, I like that from Adam there. A little bit of fire in the belly. 138. And the question, didn't he? Says, has he had his time? We don't know how far Adam can go yet. He has an uncapped potential. He's not even really been out on the tour for any more than. He's, he's a baby in terms of dart sense, in terms of his travelling and the level of experience. So who knows just how far he can go. He did mention in his interview, though, before the match, that he felt he doesn't have that big power scoring to really live with the big 59. boys. But what he does have is he has a very good level of consistency to a very close to professional standard. If you can be running around about that 1991 and when i say running around the 90 to 91 it's 60. very different to hitting a 90 to a 91 average because that what hitting a 90 to 91 average might mean you've had two legs averaging 83 you have one leg averaging 97 and it puts you around the 90. it's not a, a true reflection where with adam we tend 60. to get a, a running average it's a consistent throughout the match there's not much wavering of up and down in the level of performance it's a nice sort of straight across the board performance yeah, I think that's a perfect Six assessment, two. Matt. I think he knows an awful lot about the game. And, and the reason I say that, just some of the fundamentals he does in the, in the game. He's very cute around the board. His board management is good. I mean, he'll know exactly that Leonard Gates has played 26. at the World Series. He's the North American champion this year. Beating Danny Baggish in the final. And uh, David Cameron, the senior's world master. And Jules Van Dongen along the way. Jules is a pro to a card holder. You know, Leonard Gates is the man out of the six, hence the reason I went for him to win this tonight with a real pedigree. He's got his few problems he needs to iron out, whereas this guy has been travelling for one year. So if you're watching and you're looking for inspiration, look at the story of this lad. And if Leonard, you get the opportunity via the ADC to come to the Motor Super Series, grab it with both hands. If you are over 50 as well, the Moda Super Series has got a partnership now with the Seniors Tour. 60. So, like Adam's come on here from the ADC, you can also get a ticket to the Moda Super Series via the Seniors. More details will be released of that and how to qualify for them in the very, very near future. But go and check it out. Check out the event. Get on that tour. You can be here in the Super Series. And... One thing we know about these groups, I've done these finals nights many times, you cannot afford to lose heavy because you've only got two opportunities. And for that reason, this break of throw opportunity here from Adam Warner, 97, 56. could be huge, just Adam like the reaction we are likely to see if he takes it. Sur surprisingly, we are en entering darts along the 21 average. Double 12. 73. And the kind of... Because after throwing Leonard 21 darts, 48. I don't think Leonard Gates expected to be back. And he's very good at, uh, on the doubles, which is probably based on the week I've had with my predictions. But if he still feel confident this double eight 32. would go. He hasn't missed them. That's one of his big strengths. Is it Adam Warner's week? Adam, you're well, that's Sheffield 24. Make the noise. It's probably about a four-hour trip they've done, so fair play to you guys. 
really good of you to come down here and support your man. Can he give you something to shout about? Something to enjoy, a reason to be here. Game and that gives him all of the above. Adam Warner. Adam Warner breaks the throw, and it is vital. If you lose this first game, you have to lose so it tight. Adam's, a throw Adam's already first. done his minimum job here in getting game a couple on. of legs on the board. Leonard Gates could be backed into a corner. This is not the group phases that you've seen all week where you're going to play 10 matches, 8 matches, 15 matches. You've got two. 100. I wonder if Gert Nenches is watching this right now because the guy in your picture, Leonard Gates. I must admit, I do like these competitions. The shoot for the moon open. 100. The choo-choo classic winner. But that guy, Leonard Gates, is at Ali Pali. This is wonderful match practice for him, he said. You know, the plan was to do really well, travel to London tomorrow. One and it is Gert Nenches on Monday. But right now, he's second best against Adam Warner. And I think I'm the one who's possibly doubted him the most. Didn't expect him to get through that group there. He's the guy I thought wouldn't get through this qualifying, all based on my assessment of just this inexperience. But what a wonderful story for the Moda Super Series this would be. 100. I do have to say, though, with that, you say you didn't have that expectation. But as Group A went on, he grew on you. Like he probably did with everybody at home as well. He grew on you. And as the week went, it was, hey, okay, he I like this. Can you do it again? Oh, he has done it again. Can you do it again? Oh, he's brilliant. And everything impressed you about him as it went on. And I'm guessing that pattern is still continuing tonight. We asked him questions, Matt, and he gave us the answers. Tonight is main 57. exam. 57. His revision's gone great. And right now, he's doing mighty fine. 60. I think Leonard I mean, Gates is a little bit shocked at this. And I tell you what, the fourth dart is in this game. That crowd behind Adam are absolutely magnificent for him. He's got 90% of the support in there right now. And the big 19 is not the end of the world because he still leads a two-dart combo. Leonard, you require 120. And I just have the feeling he may have been listening to me and you this week because I don't believe he thought he was not such a power scorer. And I wouldn't... Uh, Concentrate on any negatives because Adam, Aye, if you are watching too. this back again, Adam, you you back, you've been an absolute credit to yourself. You've been a credit to Uni Darts and to Sheffield as well. And he wears that double 16 patch with pride. Stevie Buck, who does the competitions there. And what a dart that is. Two darts at tops. What was 60. very noticeable to me there, Matt, was he didn't do his reset. Then did you require he always usually stands back a la Rob Cross. But that time, and he'd be learning on the job as he goes along. Game show the third leg. Come back to that. Leonard you Gates. Just, you watch with, with Adam. He, he hits the necessary first dart. He stands back. He even closes his eyes. He goes through this whole routine. Well, and what Leonard we've been seeing during the week was even against super Game quick on. players, he wasn't getting dictated by the pace. And that's the first time there that he was itching to get to that tops. But hindsight's One a wonderful hundred. thing, of course. Note has been made in the notebook. There isn't a lot of time in these. There are short format games. You don't get many chances at it. One you know, it's really been a good credit to that uni system. I think uni darts has a lot of legs to it. I think there could be see some real developments on the university scene. We've both done a couple of exhibitions with the 60. universities, and we'll be doing some again this year as well. And they are fantastic nights, and everyone just so passionate about the darts and really embracing it and i feel this could be sort of part of the development of the 60. game and adam warner could be the flag bearer of said system leonard gates would have been hoping for a little bit more in this one. it's almost like he hasn't settled which seems strange to say for a player who's 52 years old with a level of experience and titles that he has in the game but this is a completely different vibe to what he's done here the last couple of days. We're playing in Group C, and I can tell you, I played in these groups before. These short format groups, you do get distracted by the leg count because the rules of tonight are so strict and tight that, yes, you want to win and get it out of the way, but at the same time, you're ticking off legs while you're doing so.
Can I just play devil's advocate Aye, there in the want... sense that these are both on the debut? And I'm even treating myself that I'm very inexperienced with a Motor Super Series. I don't think, I don't personally think they them sort of things are on the minds of these two players. I think they're all, both of them are just focusing on, just want to finish in the top two. If I get one win under the belt, but I've got to ask you this one, Matt, what a difference having a crowd in here is. Yeah, absolutely. It's... It so changes the environment. And it it makes the stage room smaller because instead of being in this big room and it just being you, it's like where that yellow line is, you see faces straight away. Another thing here, Adam, treble one leaves him 101. That leaves the bull. This could recover it. Is this that reset? Loads a kiss to the crowd. That's something different that you don't get because this week you'd give a kiss to the tables and chairs. You'd be on top 79. of the tables and chairs if that one went in. Leonard, you're going to get, he has to get that balance right of being himself, showcasing his personality we're beginning to see, and not letting his friends dictate what the prize is. That's possibly the boring, boring does are coming out of me, but it sounds like he is listening. But just stand back. He's wandering up and down now. No, he's Stand behind five. Leonard and now and go through your process. 25. Watch him again. He'll stand still. And... There's a little exhale of breath. And there, see how he stops there? He rubs of his hand, closes his eyes. Positive visualisation. It worked last time. He's dreaming of this one going in. 17. Leonard, you require 46. This time it was a bit of a flyer. Leonard has had some... He's been fairly lucky. Maybe lucky is a bit extreme, but there's been a couple of days he won games he shouldn't have done. And he's getting opportunities. 14. And there's the crowd. Adam, you require eight. Yeah, I'd use the word fortunate at times rather than, than lucky. He's been a bit fortunate to get a few opportunities, but he's normally taken them. That's probably the first time he's let it pass him by. Adam didn't let anything pass him by in Group A. 24 points from a possible 30. Game he lost just three lads. matches Adam as he gives the uni lads something to cheer about. Three legs to one up. That's the breaker throw back. And Adam, if like it's Adam is now to throw throwing first. first for the match. And this would be a sizable win, especially Game when on. we look at the movement forward. Paul Nicholson made a statement a couple of weeks ago. And he said that if you have two points and a plus legs difference, you are through. You cannot be caught. We have plus legs difference and two points. By that, it means if Adam Warner wins this, it's just hey, a matter of legs away from being in the semi-final. That crowd could be the deciding factor. They're absolutely brilliant. I can hear them from the commentary booth. Every time I've tried to predict the week. 96. I've got it badly, badly wrong. This is the guy who I thought not only would win this match, win this group, but to actually win the event. And he's rattled. He's frustrated. 140. And this guy is absolutely cool as a cucumber. Sheffield Steel. You will have a bit of a break in between 62. the games. We've got three matches before Adam Warner comes back to play Chris Landman. Leonard Gates will just miss the one, and then he will play... Chris Landman, someone who I'm interested to see tonight. Really excited to see how Alex Small gets on. I mentioned on the balcony. He's the biggest outsider with a lot, but I'm not so sure. Just like we wasn't so sure with Adam Warner, but every time we see him, he is making us more and more a believer. 140. Look at the score here. Adam, 141 with six starts minimum. So the perfect start for Adam Warner. I heard what you said last night, does it? You wrote me off. 82. That's a weak dart, that last one. But luckily, it leaves a two-dart combination. He would have took that before. Leonard has not been himself. Finally. 180. It's the 180. Adam, leaves 23. But 59. I think the thing he was trying to get to there was just make Adam think. Tops. Or the 
match. There's the reset. There's the visualization. There's the G up. Go and has the dream we dream put Leonard Gates to sleep. A wonderfully constructed four legs. Fabulous start to the evening for Adam Warner. And he moves on. The points are on the board. And has he got one eye on the semi final already? And there's the Warner shuffle. Wonderful start for the young man. Adam Warner four. Leonard Gates one. Next up, Richard Veenstra, Nick Kenny. Well, what a win for Warner in that first match of the night. Sensation in no time at all here at the Super Series as Leonard Gates, the favourite to win finals night before a dart was thrown, is thumped 4-1 by the ADC qualifier, Adam Warner, who impressed in Group A earlier in the week. Uh, he's got his Sheffield Uni mates with him in the audience. They were very happy with his display. It was the scoring that did it, wasn't it? He hit twice as many three-figure visits as Leonard Gates did, despite him having the matches only 180. So Gates in trouble ahead of his second game. Warner off to a winning start. We now move to Group 2 and the opening match of that group, which features Nick Kenny 
and Richard Veinstra. Uh, Kenny, well, he was the last man to make it through to finals night. We can take a look at him in action yesterday. Kenny with a 91 finish against Rob Collins. He'd lost his first three matches before finally getting a win to book his place at finals night, the Welshman. And Veinstra, well, he's been in decent form all week, but has had a tendency to either win big or lose big, and the latter could spell disaster for Veinstra. It's very difficult to recover from a heavy defeat like Leonard Gates is going to have to do this evening. Veinstra the favourite to win this group, and Henry Deacon caught with him a little earlier on. Richard, finals night on your debut here at the Super Series. How would you reflect on your week? Yeah, it's a busy week. <laughs> uh, you started early on the first three days and the last three days very late. And now again very late because uh, we all want to reach the, the final night. But uh, yeah, it went good. So, Of course, it's your first time in this competition. Is it a format that you have to adjust to as the week goes on? Because it's a bit different to competition play in, say, WDF events. Yeah, yeah. But I like it. I like the stage and, uh, yeah, I like it. Does it add another dimension of a crowd in this evening? Yeah, it doesn't affect me that much. So uh, I like it when there's somebody who's watching us. So, yeah. It would be a bit of a dream if you walked away from your debut week with that £5,000 of course, that place at Champions Week. Yeah, of course. Everybody wants. I'm one of the six. So, yeah, yeah make a good night tonight. We wish you all the best, Richard. Good luck. Thank you. Well, this is their third meeting at the Super Series this week. Veinstra has won both, including a 4-0 win on Thursday. Kenny got closer last night, but was beaten 4-3. And we'll be looking to avenge those losses to get off to a flyer against Flyers. I'll hand you back to our commentary team, Matthew Edgar and Glenn Durrant. Thank you very much, Chris. What a wonderful start to the night, Adam Warner. What an absolute credit he's been this week. And considering I didn't know a great deal about him, I have a whole host of things to go back and remind me of him. But right now, these two guys will be sick to death of the sight of each other twice this week, of which Richard Veinstra has got the better in both. And only last week, the World Masters, Nick Kenny broke the dream of Richard to win it in his beloved Holland. Nick Kenny in your picture now, the Welsh captain. We've seen both phases of his game really this week on he came out on thursday night was absolutely outstanding in fact in fact his okay, first, first average, richard to throw first was over 105 game on. he was my tip sort of all week but yesterday was just not at the races uh, i tried to grab a quick message with him earlier no, and he quite simply six. said i like playing against quick players so he said i feel good i feel focused again and he's ready to rock 45. Yeah, um, I was one of those, like yourself, that was very much down the road of Nick Kenny. I do a preview before the night over on the Greyhounds. Hey, and with that, I tipped Nick Kenny on both nights. I've gone completely the opposite way tonight. I'm not sure this action yesterday, I mean, it's already looking better than it did yesterday, to be fair. There's a lot more speed in the arm. 140. But there was, there was a delay of speed. There was a stall, there was a stutter, and it just showing a guy who wasn't confident, and the results shown that as well. And 60. I thought there was value tonight, which was Edgar's prime picks over on the Greyhounds earlier on, on Sporty Stuff TV. And part of that prime pick was Richard Veenstra to 90. beat Nick Kenny. He was priced up at 8 to 13, and Veenstra, with the advantage of throwing this match, I thought represented very good value. 59. Yeah, without trying to promote ourselves, it's not about us tonight, but we're both like our coaching. And we've had a real disagreement about the action of, of Nick Kenny. I like what I see. I like that deceleration. Deceleration of bringing the dart back. He then holds it on his point of release and let goes. Uh, Matt has a different opinion. And mm. certainly, I can't think of another word, but not dart tightness, but it, it, it there's definitely 86. an effect in his rhythm. But I like this. That's how he brings that slowly to a stop. See, tonight's better. Mm. Tonight is much... It, there's not a stutter. Last night, there was a stutter and a stall. And with that, it made it all push. And there's a much more fluency in there. And you can get that natural arc of the dart. Already leg one. 
much better from Nick Kenny in terms of the action. And I've written uh, Richard Finch off a couple of times this week, and then he's pulled off some magnificent Easy. finishes, so Nick don't ever write him off. But it'll be a very dis disappointing start if he loses his first leg, and more importantly, he loses his throw. It'll be tough to break Nick twice. Game shown the first leg. Like we're going to get the Nick, Nick Kenny, Kenny of Thursday night. He wasn't 100% happy with uh, his foot on the hockey, and he's bought some extra padding for inside his shoes Shagling today. Nick to throw first. Looks like that's already working for him because for me, I look at the eyes with Nick Kenny. And yesterday he was wandering, he was looking up at the ceiling. One and he just looked. 180! It's great to have a crowd in here tonight, isn't it? I mean, we've sat here since Monday morning at 9.30. It is a church hall as 140. well. Brilliant venue. Unbelievable stages, the feedback we're getting off all the players. It's just great. Fantastic to have you, the crowd, here. It's an instant feedback in there where you get the 180, the 180 cards go up. There's no better 80. feeling than turning around and looking at that visual. That's unlucky you hit a 180, you hit a treble 20, and then you get a bounce out. We should no emotion. And that's 59. what I like. Talked about Richard Feenstra this week, Matt, didn't we? About I was disappointed that he hasn't done more in the game. A bit like a racehorse, he canters up to that final furlong. 56. And just when you think big things are going to happen in his darting career, he comes to a stall. And that was uh, Matt's concern about him winning it tonight. That He has this history of having the headlines, like breaking the all-time Lakeside World Championship average. But they're not finishing the job and losing the next match that year. So that's possibly the reason why both me and Matt haven't uh, predicted that Vince will win tonight. But what a talented man. We compared him to a racehorse. I think there's a great expression there. It's like he's cantering up to the final furlong. And as soon as the no, jockey starts riding, he just 80. stays at that same pace. If anything, he starts slowing down. That's been a habit over the years. Nick Kenny will be disappointed with that one, but he's still going to get a dart at the ball. But he has to come wide. He's going to have to David Beckham this one. Looking around that bullseye. 55. The 25 and Veenstra. Richard 70. Let off with one here. An opportunity to get his throw back at the very first time of asking. Is this something he's been good at this week, these combination 54. shots? Nick, you require And interesting that not only did that miss, it was like by a long, long way. Will Kenny punish? It's not the greatest of mark. It just means it's not a great deal across the hockey. Game but show. What the I'm second liking day. about Nick Kenny is not Nick the dance, Kenny. not the arm, not this. He's not beating himself up. He's not feeling sorry for himself when he hits the wire. He just simply moved across so the hockey. To throw first. Never took Game his on. eyes off double eight. The focus is back. Nick Kenny is back. 140. Yeah, he certainly started better than yesterday when he was hitting those 70 averages. I'd say he wasn't too happy with the foot placement. He One felt he was getting a bit sore. 180. Treble 20 is going to be getting very sore if he carries on like this. That is his second maximum. And that's a sign as well of Nick Kenny playing well. When he starts playing well, that power scoring... Those 180s really start to fly. Yeah, we've seen a sublime to the ridiculous with Kenny this week. 105 average to open the show. And a few 70 average. Yes, he just Noisy. was beating himself up. It wasn't nice. He even stuck his head in the commentary box and was just being very hard on himself. And, yeah, it was just... 60. I just think he got a bit rattled, lost his focus. Far from it tonight. It's all about those eyes. Never take your eyes off that prize. Never take your eyes off where you're aiming. But he's not beating himself up. We've seen people shake their heads. He'd be disappointed with that. 44. Did you record 161? He's keeping it cool. But if there's one thing you don't do, is give this man a chance. He should, really should. No, yeah, he should. He should use the bull on that last down. That's exactly what he did. It gives himself a two-dark combination. Yeah, good thinking there from Richard Veenstra and when you're behind, you've got to make sure that not only do you throw good darts, but you throw sensible and smart darts. 71. Give yourself every opportunity. You're going to potentially have to utilise it again. That's a bit risky. I'd have probably looked at the 15 there to guarantee myself a dart of the ball. Nick Kenny 
is a player who's capable of taking out 30. this one three two and then literally letting you know about it. Thirty two. That was a stinker. Very poor setup. Doing a bit of maths. Travel nineteen. What a finish this would be. There's the growl. It's all internal. One hundred and seven. Twice the bullet at the twenty-five. Richard require forty-one. Now, now, now. It's a must-hit, Richard Veenstra. Your campaign must Games start now. On the third leg. Like I said Richard earlier, Veenstra. soon as you start writing him off from nowhere, he fights back. Now he only has to break Nick Kenny once, so he has to focus on Probably the positives. Nick to throw first. And ideally, that's now. Eighty-five. Very fluent is Richard. I've met many people in the game of darts, and he's right up there with the very best. Lovely family, works hard, loves his darts, and just a lovely personality. Never has a bad word to say about anyone, but when you get him 60. on the hockey, and when you talk about Nick Kenny's eyes there, Richard's a piercing. Never takes, never blinks, or as he blinks, he never Sixty. normally blinks. There's the side view there of Nick Kenny's throw. Nick Kenny was a pro tour card holder. I'm sure he's got aspirations, but a very proud Welsh captain at the moment. He wears that shirt with pride. 83. Too much movement in the in play at the moment. Look, he's not convinced yet that Nick Kenny's becoming the big favourite in this one. As we do hit a very crucial part of this match. And one you can already 100. tell it that these early matches, and it sounds so crazy when you think they're in little mini groups and you're saying that the early games, but you do not want to lose that first Four, one and then have to chase or watch someone else's results. The last thing you want to do as a dart player is stand there looking at the screen hoping somebody else does something on your behalf. One. Kenny is the one looking more assured. I didn't think I'd be making that statement because this guy's consistency is uh, 89. always in question. I, require 100. I think I used the term feast or famine with Veenstra. At the moment, he's starving. Well, I was looking over the last five days. We've had the pleasure of watching Richard 60. Veenstra from Monday all the way through to yesterday in group phases. And those early games have always worked out quite well for him. And he's played at two different time slots. Played Eight, group A, which is a 9.30 start. Nicky required played 40. in group B, which is a 10 o'clock start. So he'll be very used to this time slot. Nick Kenny, got two more darts. Game shot the four one play. leg away from the match. An average in the mid 80s is enough in this one. I said in the last game that sort of consistent base. So if there's Richard no point to in throw one leg throwing 80 and one leg throwing 100 because you're likely going to be playing for the best scenario of one all. So if you can average 90 in both legs, you're going to be competitive. And you're going to give yourself an opportunity. And Nick Kenny is throwing consistent darts. And that is a true reflection in the average rather than one of those up and down waivers. 15. As Matt alludes to, he's sort of concentrating on the actual dart. For me, I'm just watching Nick Kenny, the person. Yesterday, his head was looking 59. up, down, was not very happy with the hockey and berating himself. And it's not like I was sort of talking about on Thursday. It's as if you've come in and it's business tonight. 55. And that happens, doesn't it? When you don't feel right, or you're not playing right, or you're not playing to the best of your ability, the hockey distracts you. The light will distract you. The slight bit of wind or the hum or that will distract you. Uh, someone making a note. That, everything distracts you when you're not fully performing. I think you'd have a brass band behind him tonight and he wouldn't be bothered. He's in the zone. Not only would it be a win, a 4-1 win, like you said, all of a sudden leg difference is massive. 96. Richard Vinch would be, be becoming to be a big fan. And Nick Kenny plays Alex Small. And don't miss Alex Small. 
Can you talk about rough diamonds? 55, rich golden nuggets. 46. The young man's got everything and still learning. He's also got my one to watch for tonight. No, I Very good value. If you're looking for value, he's your man. It's eight to one at the start of the day. Really, really like that odds. I think it's far, far too big. He's got hey, a big T5. title to his name. You require 53. And he's also got that explosive ability where he can just run away with a game. 13. And they're the type of finishes he was putting away with a plum this week. It's all just a bit of a struggle tonight for Richard Veenstra. Ninety one. Richard required forty. Tops for Vinstra to stay in this contest. Ten, this is a big dart. Twenty. Sati since Monday at nine thirty. He has been putting them away with ease. On finals night when he's in the last furlong. It's Nick Kenny with two darts for the match. And there it is, what the, the start match. of the night for Nick Kenny. Nick Kenny. A well-crafted performance, albeit not at his blistering best, but it's the two points that matter. And it's Nick Kenny that moves forward. For Richard Veenstra, it's a must-win next match. He'll have his eyes very much on Nick Kenny against Alex Small, but it's advantage Kenny in this group. Next up, we have Leonard Gate returning against Chris Landman.
the favourites are falling here at the Moda Super Series, it seems. Uh, both Leonard Gates and Richard Vainstra had the bookies backing before the evening started, but have both lost out heavily as well, 4-1. Adam Warner and now Nick Kenny playing the role of Grinch tonight in this last show before Christmas. Kenny winning 4-1 after losing twice in the last couple of nights to Vainstra. Uh, a good display from the Welshman, off to a very good start as well. Uh, well, now we turn our attentions back to the first group, and Leonard Gates is now kind of tiptoeing along that tightrope. If he loses this one, he will be out after just a couple of matches. That's because he lost to Adam Warner in the opening match of the evening. Warner, well supported here tonight. He's got his university darts teammates from Sheffield in the crowd. They've made a, a five-hour trip to get here. Had a few pit stops on the way, I'm reliably informed, but it's been worth the wait for them. Adam Warner celebrating that victory, and it has left Leonard Gates with a simple equation. He must win this match against Chris Lamman or he is out. It's the first time they've met uh, on record, and it will be a bit of an unknown quantity for the pair of them. But Landman has been pretty consistent this week and he will be in, I'm assuming, confident mood. But let's find out from him. He caught up with Henry earlier. Chris, welcome to finals night. In your yeah. first week here at the Super Series, how have you found the week so far? Uh, yeah, good. I play good games and uh, I love the venue here. Never been before, but uh, yeah, I was played a lot of games for the first time. But uh, yeah, I'm happy how I played. Do you find it was the sort of competition where you learnt a lot more as the week went on? Uh, yeah, I think so. Normally I don't play so many games after each other, just, uh, so it, I want to look how it went. But yeah, for my form I play well, I think. Uh, I hope it's, I do that tonight too. So. Finals night tonight, there's a crowd in as we can hear. Does that add a couple of more hairs on the back of your neck, so to speak? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, uh, I'm more right like that it's noisy than it's so quiet. So just I don't think I've, it bothered me. And what would winning Champions Week mean to you? Yeah, I don't think about it now. Yeah, first I want to win this and then we will see. I don't look funny for harder. Well, Chris, we wish you all yeah. the very best tonight. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Well, this time last year, Chris Lamman was beating our very own Scott Mitchell at the World Championship. Leonard will be hoping to do what he did and win on debut. But will his next match be that one on the Ali Pali stage or will he still have business to attend to here tonight? Let's find out. Back to Matt and Glenn. Thank you very much, Chris. That's twice you've mentioned that Lamman versus Scott Mitchell victory. Which I thought was only me that you bullied, Chris. I didn't think I'd be sat here so early in the night. There's the guy, my pick who would win the tournament tonight but the scenarios I have abacus here I have my ten fingers and ten toes and Matt's ten fingers and nine toes working out all the permutations that we might have but it's very simple okay, first leg is Leonard to Leonard throw Gates, first. if you don't win this match game on bye bye yeah and Chris Murphy did mention as part of his link over here that the favorites are falling Leonard Gates is your strong favourite for this game, four to seven. Chris Landman, five to four, which on the basis of Leonard Gates' 81 average and only one leg in the first 42. game, and the fact that the pressure is currently on him, wouldn't you say that that represents a little bit of value? Absolutely. Just remember to gamble responsibly. 18 plus be gamble aware .org. 55. And just before the answer, the guy in your picture there, if you don't know him, Chris Landman, me and Matt. So maybe Matt didn't know him like I did prior to five days. Uh, watching him up close and personal from Holland. Super quick player. Super super fluent. Sort of lobs the darts along. Doesn't one often deviate hundred. from the treble 20. So he's always good for a bet on the most 180s in a match. He doesn't use board management like a lot of the Dutch players. He won't one. be affected by the situation tonight. He just seems to play the board. The crowd, he's already said in his interview, we will enjoy. For Leonard, it's got to start now, but hey, good value. I've sat here, watched Chris Lamman and watched him at his brilliant best at times this week. Yeah, he's probably been no, one of the most he consistent he performers, actually, of the week as well so far. And But with the ability to explode with that power scoring. He's one for you then, Matt. I mean, Richard Feenster, we... 
just as we look at dart at the bullseye. Which require 100. Would have been the best finish of the night so far. Treble 19, it's still on. Before I ask Chris. 44. Before I ask Matt, a little poser on Chris. Watch this first. Maybe double eight. Game shown the and first. This is a much more polished Let performance gates. already. Albeit not as brilliant best right now, but for now, it, all he can do is just put two points on the board and ask some questions. But so it's Chris I'm to throw pose first. a question to my fellow commentator. Richard Vince was nowhere near the guy we've watched all week. 14. Does fatigue kick in after playing here since Monday morning at 9.30? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the muscles get a bit more tired. I, I've done this myself where I've gone through Group A, I've ended up in Group 60. B, got through Group B. You get to here, you are tired. It is a long week. But when that big character, £5,000 in the place in Champions Week is on the line, you just find something. But you tend to find it when you're on the stage. It's when you're in the back room that it just all seems a little bit tiring, a bit too over-familiar. And over-familiarity is just as bad as being new and a debutante to things. And one hundred and forty. I wonder if the the uni guys at the back there, you can see them really enjoying this game. I wonder if they're aware that if Chris Landman wins, their man, Adam Warner, would be through to the semi finals with a guaranteed prize fund of one thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. Well, they are from the university, so I'd like to think 41. so. A lovely set up there from Landman. Loves the double top. And if it goes with how it goes this week, he normally just goes above the target first of all, and then pings it with a second one. But well, bearing in mind, I haven't got a prediction right this year. 135, Christopher, go on 40. Tops for Landman, 13 dart leg possibility. Game 15 will do. Second leg. Chris and this Landman. is what I say about functional doubling, because Chris Landman there has controlled the game to the same level, Leonard Gates has not been able to come the back to the Leonard board. To throw first. And then Landon looks at 33%. If he does that a couple more times, we could say, oh, well, maybe if he tightened up on the doubles. But he's controlling the game the same level. So functional doubling is very important. 140. Lots of debutants this week. It was great to hear you from Leonard Gates. I could listen to their accent all, all day, all night. One. And they're learning on the job as they go along. Um, so, you know, for them, the most important thing right now so whether the Sheffield University lads know about what the outcomes can be, I'm not even 100%. These two do. I think they're just the type of players who just play the game. If I win at the end, have I got the most points? We move on. Well, you'll get real strategists. You'll get people working out per leg. And I remember doing that once against Andrew Gildin. And boy, have I been reminded of that tonight. Well, the good thing for Chris Landman going up against someone who's already lost a game in Leonard Gates, he comes 100. into this game knowing if he wins, he's through. But then he also knows he's got another bite of the cherry later on when he plays Adam Warner because then they'd all tie up on two points and it'd go to legs. So essentially, when we look at the psychology side of things, this is like a free game for Landman where Gates is back up against the wall, which again goes back to that odds of five to four 60. and does suggest that that represented very playable value. Yeah, good point. 141. Then you've got 140. I'd like to say I've enjoyed the company this week of Matt Edgar. Even been on the Edgar TV twice this week. Eight. Chris, you've got six. Chris Landman, these two dark combos. Oh, well, he's been brilliant. Game show once again, his favourite like tops. Chris Land. Not of a lot of emotion again, Matt. I think yesterday, for the first time, I seen them punching in the air. Did Richard and Chris? Well, like it's normally, Chris you wouldn't be able to tell. Game on. If he was two one up or two one down, whereas I'm just keeping my eye there on Leonard, just keeping loose. There really was no punchline there, was there? I thought I was waiting for it when you was like, "Oh, I've enjoyed the." The company this week, a bit like, I thought, here we go, he's got a line ready, and nothing came. If you are also interested in the Alexandra Palace, the PC World Dark Championship is underway, and right now, Josh Rock is currently level with Jose Justicia. I tell you what I've noticed in this game, a lot of the Sheffield lads are supporting Chris 66. Landman here. 
But maybe they do know what the outcomes are. I like that angle. As you can see, it just that little slant there would normally mean players go down to the 19s or use the 18s, whereas Chris, no matter what he's doing, you'll watch him cover. And there's the sign of distress a dark player does when everything's going against him. So I apologise, Leonard, for saying that you were going to win it tonight. 43. Because you were going 96. the poison chalice. Well, I think the poisoned arrows in the hand of Chris Landman's got quite a bit to do with this as well. 140, 140, 125 after following. Well, that does follow, should I say, a 14 dart leg and a breaker throw. And you can see the frustration is now coming in for Leonard Gates. He's not playing his best, and he's playing a guy five. who is throwing an average of 102.16 and is motoring towards 21. the semi finals. If Chris Landman books his place in the semi finals, he will also be handing a ticket to Adam Warner. They will still need to play each other later on. There will be something on that game. We'll let you know when that game comes round in game five. 137. Nick versus Chris Alex Small 20. before then, but right now it's all about Chris Landman and can he convert these 20 game points? Show the four play. He gives Chris it Landman. a little bit of a fist pump. Been here all week. He would love to leave with that top prize. A very good week. Like it's Leonard to throw first. Pounds. Game on. Plus the golden ticket. So the biggest one that we've got here at the Moda Super Series Champions Week. £20,000 will be on the line. And the chance to join Conan Whitehead on the roll of honour of the 60. series winners. Do you think this will affect his performance at Ali Pali? It could do. Or is it a fresh day, fresh start, new competition? Because I guess when you walk to the World Championships, it's sort of everything sort of changes and, you know, your focus is on the job there. But it would have been nice. 60. He had that pathway. He had that vision of coming here to to win Group 8. Week 8, sorry. And then I'll go on to Ali Pali and play Gert Nenches. But it doesn't really happen tonight. And to be fair, you know, apart from Friday when he won 5 out of 5 and even then, at times, he wasn't at his brilliant best. It's been a great week, whereas Raymond Smith came here and was very, very dominant and put on a virtuoso performance, really. 140. That's better from Gates. A very good leg, in fact. 36 left after 12 darts. And he pushes hey, his average well into the and 90s now, 36. just showing 93. This is what we want to see from him. We want to see that player that could go to Alessandra Palace and pick up some wins. No score. But Chris you require 160. He might not be picking up any wins here because this is match shot for Landman. Tops. 96. Leonard, you require 36. Another opportunity for Leonard Gates. He's missed three. At this already, he's just Game had to watch his opponent have a potential. He had a match start. It wasn't a potential match start. It was a match start. He could have closed it. He could have sent Leonard Gates home packing. He could have been going to the so Alexander Palace a little first. bit early. Game on. Instead, as Owen Binks has just let us know, it is game on. 41. There was a moment. And it was game two on Friday when I said, OK, Leonard Gates, we've said you're the class act. We've said you've got the ability to win this group. One if you are the class act, stand up and do it now. This is the point where we do exactly that again. It has to be great from here. Good, OK, is not enough. And the last thing you wanted to hear, Matt, was that does the tone of Binks of 180. He's kept himself in it, but this the thing with people like Chris Landman and people like Richard Beastra. They're so quick, and within 30 seconds, he's on 140. Just when Leonard Gates was thinking, you know, is my luck, you know, is my luck changing? It might have come a little bit too late, but all of a sudden, 40. It is not looking good for Leonard Gates, and it's six darts from 140 from Chris Landman, and he'll stay there for the turn. And what a beautiful setup that is.
think Leonard knows the outcome right no, now. No, he's serious. He's lucky that last Which one, because it would have left a bogey. But it's tops for Landman. Thirty. Could Leonard that be 130. decisive? He's had one or two opportunities as he shakes his head because sometimes it's just your week when people aren't putting doubles against you, but it's, it's going to require a treble. Yeah, you don't need a commentator right now. 58. Creature required 10. Double five's not a gimme. The double one. Game as show quick as it started match. for Leonard Gates, it's now over for the, for the American, and that's a wrap for Group 1, as Landman secures his place in the semi-final, and the only thing a place now is in who will top the group when he plays Adam Warner next. Maybe a big shock for the night as Leonard Gates trudges off, and he's off to Ali Pali now, but it's Chris Landman 4, Leonard Gates 2. And next up, the return of Nick Kenny. Well, something of a shock here at the Moda Super Series it is Exit Gates as Leonard loses his first two matches 
the pre-night favourite to take the title, America's Leonard Gates, going out. A 4-1 defeat in his first match, followed by a 4-2 loss at the hands of Chris Landman, the Dutchman who, with a game to spare, goes through alongside the man who beat Gates in Game 1, Adam Warner. So that is a bit of a surprise. Leonard will now begin his journey to Alexandra Palace, where he'll take on Herb Nentures at the World Darts Championship. But our attention now turns back to Group 2 and a meeting between the Welsh duo of Nick Kenny and Alex Small. And Kenny can confirm his semi-final spot with victory in this one. That's after he got off to a flying start as well against Flyers' Richard Vainstra. Kenny winning that match 4-1, which is exactly what Adam Warner did earlier on. He's already through. And Nick Kenny getting revenge for two defeats against a Dutchman earlier this week. And is in a very, very strong position ahead of this match against his Welsh compatriot, who both spoke to Henry Deacon before the evening got underway. Gents. Welcome to finals night here at the Super Series. Nick, what's it like to get to finals night here on this stage? Brilliant, because um, I like playing in front of a crowd, so I did it in Southampton. Um, obviously, it's the same all week, you're in a little box, but this, looking forward to, you know, a bit of an atmosphere about the place, so I'm um, looking forward to it. Does finals night add an another dimension, another element to your game, perhaps? Yeah, I think the crowd will, because... You're playing, you know, without a crowd, there's no atmosphere, it's the same all the time, but, you know, it's a few people come down, you know, cheering you on, your, your opponents can have a bit of support, so, yeah, I think, no, I enjoy the, the crowd atmosphere, I'm best on stage, so, it's, I know it's on stage in the week, but it's still sort of like you're being on the floor, but I know with the cameras and all that, but, yeah, but it's going to be like a county match, international match, or, you know, a, you know, a lakeside Ali Pali match, for example. And for Alec, what's it like for you to be here at finals night? Great. Uh, can't wish for anything better, to be fair. And of course, what would it be like to be the victor tonight, to be the last person to win on this stage in 2022? That'd be great. Win, t win any game on this stage is good, but to win, obviously, you know, a series, and you know, you're coming back, not a series, sorry, a, a week, a mm -hmm. a, go through the Champions Week, it's very good, but um, it's going to be very tough. Well, gents, we wish you both all the very best of luck tonight. Thank you. Cheers. So to confirm, Kenny can claim his semi-sport with a win over his fellow Welshman. In fact, he's only a couple of legs away of being through thanks to that convincing opening victory. Uh, can he claim that place alongside already through Landman and Warner or will Small have a big say? Two men who always have a big say, Glenn Durant and Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Chris. Once again, as you said, it's an all Welsh affair. They both know each other very, very well. When I was talking to Nick Kenny to say, I'll see you down in Portsmouth, he did mention he was looking forward to the game with Alec. Surprisingly, they've never played each other uh, in many of the local tournaments. They certainly haven't played each other in the WDF system. The Alec said he does remember one Super League game going back, and Nick Kenny won that game. But uh, my so fellow co commentator, Matt Edgar, Edgar, is a huge fan of Get Alec Small. I mean, I've got the pleasure of commentating on him last time like i said a rough diamond he's got all the attributes to go very very far in the game um very proud man absolutely delight to be here the guy with the best flights promoting autism 85 and he's very very raw very quick i've used the word if you know if there's something i would say to him just to have a bit more composure, but I've been dying to see how he no, reacts with six. the crowd about the whole night tonight. And he is the champion, the champions winner. Um, Aye, you've got to be, you want... have some talent to get to the top in that. Well, more than just talent, that one. That is, when we said this week's a marathon, not a sprint, that one is a sprint. That is a replica of the old news of the world tournament where it's best of three all the way throughout. You've got to qualify first. Through your local area, they'll find a venue nearby, which you'd have to have won that. One hundred ticket through, and then two hundred and fifty-six players, all champions of their areas, descend on Cardiff, and ten thousand pound on the line. There was a lot of tour card holders, professional players, ex-professional players, 
It was a very, very big lineup. Gerwin Price, Johnny Clayton, Ryan Searle, some of the previous 90. winners on the that event. 70. The list is short. And it is very, very lucrative. As is this leg by the looks of it. Because Kenny's going to have one dart at double 16. 54. And it require 145. If you're looking for a spark of inspiration. It's not to be here. Just feels a little rushed. Free nose. Doesn't need me here, you're telling him. 16. He'll feel disappointed with this start because he just looks like he's in the zone. He looks like he's here to win it today. Game show on the he first. Did the hard leg. work with the scoring. Nick Kenny. And finished it off with a plum. It's 1 0 Kenny, and he's only one leg away. But so plan, a to throw first. And plan A is just simply securing your place in the semi final. And this is what we talked about with Alex and Sue for quick time. Two trebles. He wanted to thank a couple of people. David Edwards helps him with his travel. Great support for him. He's here with his girlfriend, Shannon. And he wanted a, a little shout out for his mum, dad, nana, and sister. Well, if you're listening, he's doing you all proud. 86. It's great chatting with him. He's got a wonderful future ahead. A rough diamond, which one day I believe he could go very, very far. Very, very fast. Words have been expected of Josh Rock. I've just looked over to the Alexandra Palace and Josh Rock. Has just been Jose Justicia 3 1. But Josh Rock will be taking on Callum Rids in the next round. This is why I'm impressed with Alec. The explosiveness of his game. Despite the fact 60. that he's had a bounce like out in this, he's on the finish after nine darts. We could say he's on the finish after eight. Just a little funny story I'll go into on, on three legs about Alec. I was a bit embarrassed no, about I it, but uh, I'll give him a chance to put this away. Seemed to follow through with the whole body and everything with that one, and that was the discussion as we walked to the venue tonight. Hey, I was having with uh, Matt today. Just felt there was a bit of a body movement. He didn't like the D acceleration as much as I did. But 64. Double 16 for 1 1. 32. And if I have the boring, boring criticism, it just feels a little rushed. I would just love to see him just get a little bit of composure. Similar to Adam Warner in the first game. He seems to like find a and reset. He just 32. flings that last dart for me. Game show on the second leg. So what Matt Edwards was going to do was just look at the averages of the first dart, second dart, last dart. And that's something we're sort of going to try and monitor for Alec. So look, it's I'm just trying to, to back up first. what I'm trying to say, Game but up. Alex Smaller, at the last competition, Matt, I shook his hand and said it was absolutely fantastic to meet you. You're a lovely lad. And he went, well, Glenn, you just don't remember me, do you? 100. Went, he said, you play for England, I play for uh, Wales boys at, in Glen Rothers, and you gave me, I think I gave him a shirt or the Man of the Match trophy or something. And I went, is that you? you know, like sort of that big when I saw you last time and, and grown into a man. You see that many faces and One people in darches. Sometimes if I ever call you mate, it just means I haven't got a clue who you are. We've had a, a lot of years as I pass over to my mate. I mean, what you've been playing about 40 years now, you've probably seen a lot of people on the road in your travels. 40, I'm only 37. And that's the... Uh, World Seniors just call in now just to revoke your invitation. I wonder if Nick Kenny knows he needs two legs. 60. It's all gone a little bit quiet for him since he pinged that double in the first. And right at this moment, Edgar's pick, Alex Small. He's doing rather well. I hated that position I was in last night on the balcony, asking to choose two players. I said Adam Warner, who was absolutely amazing 64. in the first game. I I said just because he was playing one a compa compatriot, and two the fact. Twelve. I think you require one hundred and twenty. I went for Alex Small. I'm sorry if you get through here, Alec. Not an ideal lad for Nick. For some players that can just sit on top of that, so he's having to move right across the hockey. 
what a dart that is. Just watch his eyes. Watch his eyes. Doesn't take his eyes off that tops once. Game Bang. shot in the third leg. And that is something Nick I advocate. Kenny. That's something I make sure you do. Alex is looking at the scoreboard, everything now, but for Nick, he's just in a well, zone. Well, it's Alex to throw first. People would say to me, what did you think of this when you did that in the match? No idea. That was somewhere else. 140. And I just get the feeling right now, Nick Kenny is in a wonderful headspace. Well, we were told, wasn't we, before this match that Nick Kenny needed two legs. So he's got his two legs. No, Nick Kenny six. is through to the semi-final. So he's one more semi-final place available for this group. And that 100. will be going to either Alex Small or Richard Veenstra. But for me, when I was asked at the start of the day to pick out one selection, this was the one I thought Alex Small could be one the one here. And the value was there, but Nick Kenny is certainly playing a lot better than what we have seen from him the past couple of days. Hey, T1. Well, I say the last couple of days. He kicked off with 105 average. I suppose there was only one way really to go in terms of when you start that well. It's only ever going to come down. I think yesterday it was his alter ego. It was somebody else. Because he came in on Thursday. But sometimes when you're sat top of the league, I think we all were surprised at the way the outcome of Group B was yesterday. Um, and I just 90. think maybe think his preparation wasn't good because he just assumed he was through. Like I said, he's put some extra padding on his shoes. He's felt really uncomfortable with our Rocky. And I'm wondering if that's just making him feel a little bit better in himself. Because that's a great setup. And he's 190. Alex Small, we may see the bull here. 65. A rapid quick time. Nicky requires 65. 25. So he'll be looking at bullseye here. That's the perfect dart. Didn't like the way he was holding the dart there, so there's the reset. There's the eyes. Double ten. Game shot. There's the, the prize. Leg. Nick Kenny. This is Nick Kenny in his A game. It's just professional. He's showing everything that I like about him. No distress tonight. It's like it's Nick to he throw first. Watching with us, he was looking. He didn't like noises that were in the building. He didn't like things with the hockey, and he just wasn't focused. Tonight he's like a different man. Well, he's a man in the semi-final. Alex Small will be a straight shootout with Richard Beenstra. Straight knockout darts, nice and simple. It's what the players are used to. And Alex's got a little bit of support tonight. I think his girlfriend's come down to join him this evening. He told me yesterday he's going to put her up in a special budget hotel nearby. He was going to take her for a hot dog and a bag of crisps. No, he messaged me this morning. He upgraded. 57. Let me have a look what he bought her in the end. Um, onions on the hot dog? Yeah, I've upgraded for a meal to a turkey feast panini. And she thought he was going to ask her to marry her. But instead, it was a turkey feast panini. My type of guy, that's 60. Guess where I took the missus for Valentine's Day this year? The other thing. 59. Premier League. It was a famous franchise of fried chicken. And that surprised me with you. And then we went to the movies to watch The Forever. 97. If anyone follows social media? I've tried to get him out the house all week. And all his reply was, well, hey, if you were doing do you something want... interesting... I would go with you. So we went for the quiz. He didn't go. We went for a beautiful meal. He didn't go. So I said, okay, let's do something interesting. You decide. And at 12 o'clock today, I was at a toy shop. A vintage toy shop. Groovy. Well, Nick Kenny has opened up a massive lead in this. And it looks like oh, he's going to go to that last game. Game three. six. It looks like it's going to be a straight shootout. Between Alex Small and Richard Veenstra. Nick Kenny, 103 points. Game shot. 103 the finish. Match. Nick, Nick Kenny, Kenny doesn't just go through to the semi final, but Nick Kenny goes through to the semi final in style. He wins the group, he gets the advantage of throw. And Alex Small, it is not game over for him yet. It's actually game on. It's straight shootout darts in game six because he'll be taking on Richard Veinstra. But before that, 
we've got a game between two players who are also through Chris Landman, Adam Warner, and they'll have something to play for, which we will tell you during that game that is coming up in just a couple of minutes' time. The party is in full swing here in Portsmouth at the Super Series. That's because Adam Warner is on the stage behind me and his mates are uh, going to cheer him on in the semi-finals. They've got to cheer him on in the group stage first. He's already through, uh, as is Nick Kenny, who is through as a group winner in Group 2. A 4-1 winner against Alex Small, having had the same result in his opening match against Richard Vainstra. Kenny in much better form than he was last night. Uh, but now we see Warner take on Chris Landman, who's also through. The pair have booked their places through ahead of this final group game in Group 1 after both beating Leonard Gates earlier this evening. Adam Warner, well, he got the job done 4-1. And there was a big, big celebration after it. Big pause before he went to land that winning double. And there it is. And look at the reaction after shaking the hand of Gates. A little bit of a dance from Adam Warner there. He dances through 
to the semi-finals and partly because of that win Chris Landman threw as well he got the better of Gates who will head to the Ali Pali he is out of the running tonight uh, so as I said three of our four semi-final spots are confirmed the other one will be a straight shootout in the match after this when Alex Moore takes on Richard Veinstra but this one will determine who wins Group 1 and plays the winner of that match in the semi-finals. Both players through. I think this could be fun. What do you reckon, Glenn? Matt, over to you. Thank you, Chris. Beautifully put once more. Usually at this point, we're beginning to get the fingers and toes, the add-in, the calculators, everything. But tonight, it's been quite straightforward. And I think Adam's telling the guys just to quieten down a bit. No, we want it more. This is absolutely fantastic. They're a great crowd. They've travelled five hours. Let them sing and shout. And this guy won't mind. He's already said he loves a crowd. They seem like a crowd who are quite respectful. And what I mean by that, Matt, is the fact that they won't be shouting and screaming when, uh, when, when Chris is throwing his darts, albeit Chris throws his darts in about 1.9 seconds. Okay, first leg is Chris but, uh, to throw first. enjoy this. And that's going to explain sort of the importance of the game. But I think both of them got the opportunity just to throw the best darts. Yeah, it's a... First time of the week that they're going to get. But the thing is not to switch off. You can't lose that sort of... Moment. We have this sort of debate in football, don't we, when you see a team get through and then they feel the secondary team and they go, has that just 60. stunted the progress and has that just halted the momentum? But this game does still have a bit of a prize on it. So the winner of this will win the group. By being the winner of the group... That means that you will play the runner-up of the other group, but you will throw first. So think of it at, that this match is like the longest bullet you've ever seen in your life. That's a great analogy. Well 100. Done, yeah. He has been the success story, this boy. I will certainly be looking for his name. And his progress next year. And do you know what? I think he's really enjoying this. And why not? One hundred and eighty. Chris Landman seen Chris it all before. One hundred and sixty-one. Not a flicker of emotion there from the Dutchman. I like that. I'm loving it. I'm loving this. Get Game in there, Chris the Landman. That's how you shut up a crowd Chris like that. Chris Landman. Good sportsmanship. Well done, Adam Warner. Lovely darts, wonderful finish. Second leg is Adams to throw first. When someone Game does on. that and they celebrate like that, there's normally just that little bit of a moment where you think you're having it for that. And it reminds me of you recently. Five. I played Ryan Searle on a stage in Sheffield and I hit a 180. I did what Adam did, except it was for about 20 seconds. Fifth, and then Ryan went up and went treble, treble, and he missed the last one. And as he's walking back to me, because it wasn't a serious game, because he was having that. And how often do we think in a environment when someone starts celebrating, Nine, does he, he's like Adrian Lewis, he can't turn it down, can he? If someone starts going, he loves to get involved with one of them. And actually, we tend to see the best of certain players one when they get embroiled in these sort of matches. I was never one that gave too much away, but when I played someone like a Gezi Price, he, he sort of wanted you to respond. And all of a sudden, what happens when you scream and shout? All of a sudden... You know, the blood and the adrenaline in your body flies 60. all over the place. So sometimes, but with Chris Lamman, I just watched him. And there was not a flicker of emotion. And I think that 161 would have felt absolutely beautiful for him. Yeah, really, really top darts. Not just a finish, but again in this leg. Chris Landman, <laughs> we're going to say this a lot tonight. Chris Landman's looking like a guy who Nine, could win this. Nine. He hasn't really been mentioned by us an awful lot, has he? It's, you know, Richard Veenstra, yes. And, 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 and 140. Chris is just as good, if not better, than Richard. But it's just what I say, he's quiet, but effectively just gets on with his job. He's never going to get the headlines. You know, this lad's got the headlines because it's a wonderful story. It's great for the ADC as well. It's great for you know, the, the story 62. of uni darts. I mean... It would be brilliant if he does it, but if he doesn't care, this guy. That's 44 left. Maybe a little, just double, double check in. For him, it'll be a fat fall. Hmm, he's looking all over. Unless I've got my maths wrong. Which tops? 22. 
Yeah. Adam, you require one. He's such a rhythm player. But that Adam, he likes this 100 finish. I've seen him do this this week. Still possible, but not now. And it could 40, be a bit 40. of a wake-up call, actually, Matt. 40. You know, everything he touches turns to gold this week. He's got the crowd on his side. He was incredible in his first game. game show the second right now he's 2-0 down, Chris and it Landman. might not be the end of the world, him losing this game. You talked about their momentum, and you talked about the fact if he feel like it's Chris took to a good hide in a 4-0, 4-1 here, would it affect the semi-final? Could be a bit of a reality check also. 100. I'm just thinking about this group and the six players or the five players now, because we know that Leonard Gates can't go through. But when we look at, I think we spoke about every single player hey, as a possible T5. winner. Because when you said we haven't really spoke about Landman very much, when we first did it yesterday, I wrote on a bit of paper here and I was crossing out reasons as to why. And then ended up the circling hundred. Landman and Small going, I think it'll be one of them two. And then since then, I've brought Leonard Gates into my conversations. We've now got to bring Nick Kenny into our conversations. It's could be anybody's. I mean, to one hundred in our defence. You know, big underline on my opening page here. And uh, Chris Murphy also said it in the introduction. You said 60. it on the way down here that we had a case for all six. It's not going to be a surprise. I think for various reasons, it'd be great if this guy wins. Imagine them. Imagine all the Sheffield massive back for Champions Week. It would be uh, unbelievable. Um, 100. Just a good story all around it. All to play for right now, and I can't wait to see who's crowned the winner. Five grand just before Christmas. 100. What a present that would be. Well, we saw Rob Collins already tell us what he was going to do. He was going to jet off for Christmas and have Christmas in a sunny country. I wonder what One these guys are doing. With it. Which one, what a celebration there from Adam. I'm loving it. A little bit of a strut as well there from. Adam Warner. Can he now finish the job in this Adam leg? First start at a double in the match. Maybe that double 18. Game show the third. Good game, Adam good Warner. response. I think uh, one of his Sheffield Uni mates is more excited than him. I think he's on well, like it's Adam to throw yeah, first. The only thing he's saying is quiet and down, but nah, go for it. This is great. Chris, I love this. He's played in front of, you know, no crowd all week. And you ask him at the end of it, which one did you prefer? The most important no, thing of a crowd seven. is the fact that they're not screaming and shouting at that point as he's thrown his dart. They're screaming before and after. Chris Lamond, I love that. So, uh, no, don't quiet them down. Unless he's doing it for his own purpose, that he feels better when he's focused and that they're not screaming and shouting as he's throwing a dart. He's been reacting with the crowd. They're being reactive. 46. They're not trying to make it about them, which is something we've seen from crowds in the past where they've tried to make it about them, trying to influence the game. Here, 60. they're going along with the game. They're being reactive to good darts from both players. This is fantastic. We'd like to see him down here again. Can they come every week? Lads, if you're listening, Glenn Durant has offered to pay your petrol money so that you'll come down here every single week. I tell you what, they've been absolutely brilliant. It's the best crowd I've seen on a Saturday. Hey, T5. They're right behind him. What I've loved about this week also with work with Matt is the social media interaction. 140. Lots of few messages today. Jake Harlan's promoting Gary Hayes. Another local one of ours who was dominating 2000 and was it 21 and, and part of this year as well. The improvement from there. Well, get yourself to the ADC competitions next year, Gary. You would grace any stage. 100. Lee Seymour, you've been brilliant this week. Been in contact. Can you guys give a Big shout out to my friend Gail Lister. Who works in better country to massive dart fans. Yeah, thank you, Lee. As we watch Chris Lamb and go for 141. 89. And we require 88. For a level game, which I'm not sure we thought we'd be saying about three minutes ago, because Chris Landman looked like he was about to run away with this 74. one. 74. That was an Chris opportunity 52. there for Adam to win the world's longest game of bullseye. 
for the break. Game show on the four flag. Chris Landman. Remarkable how many times he just goes above the tops and then follows it in. I don't know if it's a, a trait of his. That he just it's Chris to throw first. Game times I'm, I'm talking sort of seven in every ten goes. When he goes for tops, it's one just out, the next one in. No, someone might be able five. to help me out with this. Maybe Chris Murphy upstairs will know. Maybe someone... Maybe you might even know yourself, Glenn. Maybe someone on social media is going to know this and can tweet us in at the Edgar 501. It's in front of me right now. 100. And it's open. But I say this is the world's longest game of bullseye. On the European tour, they used to actually do the bullseye on the stage. 60. But what happened in one of the events, it was like 23 darts at the ball before we got the winner. I think it was just in pipe Brendan Dolan who took each other on in that game. And then they start doing the bullet backstage. 60. Because, you know, 23 bullseye attempts took to get the winner. My favourite bull shot, I was a BDO player going to the Grand Slam 100. mat. And um, the guy actually did a nine darter in practice. He was practising with one. I was like, oh, my God, you know, this is going to be a tough game tonight. And we went for the bull, and he hit treble 11. He absolutely... 46. All of a sudden, the nerves just prior to going to the game. But all night, he'd practiced and practiced and practiced, done the nine data. And then on, on stage, he was shaking like a hundred. leaf as well. So that was my favourite bull story. Thank you to Fraser Gunn, another one who's been brilliant with the interaction this week. Really enjoyed listening to Dozer and the Edgar. Which the commentary this week. Informative, good knowledge, and a perspective of a Dapler. And the Edgar added something as well. 138. Sensible again on 95 because even a single one there would have left the two darts. Game shot on the That is a very the commendable Chris performance Landman. from Chris Lambman. He treated that game very, very seriously. He will throw first in the semi final. Doesn't always grab the headlines, does Chris Lambman? But for a very professional performance against the very likable Adam Warner in front of a very vociferous crowd. Great game. Good averages. Chris Landon moves on. Don't miss the next game. Winner takes all. Alex Small, Richard Veenstra. <laughs>
Welcome back. So Chris Landman then topping Group 1 after that victory before the break. Both players already through. Adam Warner enjoying himself in that match, celebrating those couple of maximums he hit, but Landman winning a high-quality affair. Both players averaging over 90, 50% double success, including that brilliant 1-6-1 checkout for Landman. Uh, but now... Well, it is our last group game, but effectively it's our first knockout game of the evening as it is a winner-takes-all match between Richard Vainstra and Alex Small. Uh, that because both of them have been beaten tonight by Nick Kenny, who's also made it through to the semi-finals. Uh, it started when Kenny got a 4-1 win over Vainstra earlier in the evening. Vainstra had won. The two matches they played already this week but Kenny just turned up in top form tonight and the Dutchman could only watch as the Welshman pinned that double ten to take the victory and then Kenny cut small down to size with the same score line a very nice way to wrap up that one He's cruised through to the semi-finals and it means that it is perfectly poised now for this final group game. It is, as I said, effectively a knockout game. The winner takes it all, but will it be Veinstra or Small? Let's find out in the company of Glenn Durrant and Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Chris. The final group match, as Chris alluded to, it's what we really want now. It's knockout all the way from now. Abacus is in the bin. It's good old-fashioned match play. Been looking forward to this one. It'll be quick. It'll be fluent. It'll be massive scoring. And if it's anything like Richard Finch has been playing this week, massive finishes. So sit Take back. First, Alex to throw first. And simply enjoy. Game on. I think the part that makes this game really enjoyable is this is going to be pacey. 80. It's going to be pacey and it's going to be good. They are two things and two ingredients that really bake up the perfect darting cake. Yeah, and if people are watching for the first time tonight, the guy in the picture's been he's been brilliant. Hey, um, you know, from the moment he walked in here. But it can be can be a difficult week. Whereas Alec he came One, into the competition on Thursday. He was the standout performer on the opening day with four massive wins. The ball scoring very nicely. 45. Alex Small is gritting his teeth. And there's that rawness. 135. Tax it aggressive. High scoring. He really fancies this. It hasn't been Richard's night so far. And the last hey, thing he wanted he to won. see was Alex to come out like this. I know it's very, very early doors. And that's what I like four. about that. Just that little bit of composure there. And that was no surprise that he pinged that treble. And I think he listened last time to me. I'd love 140. To and if you put that to bed. So double 16 for a wonderful start. Game he shown he the holds first. his darts with 14. Alex Small. That's job done. Great start from the young man. Richard Vinch has got a lot to think about right now. Just to update Sitting you on Mark, Richard you can't fool you so you know what's coming up. The first semi-final tonight will be Chris Landman. 59. He'll be taking on the winner of this match, Alex Small or Richard Veenstra. The 100. second semi-final will be Nick Kenny taking on Adam Warner. And it will be Nick Kenny with the darts. So Landman and Kenny winning the darts by winning their 100. groups. 100. There is just one place left to be decided, and that will be to the winner of this match. If people are asking when the Moda Super Series will be back with week nine, and it will be the first week in January. 2023 will be a very fruitful one. Over a million pound in prize money being paid out. Hey, T1. Wonderful partnerships with the ADC. Wonderful partnership with the seniors. And we'll and see how it 45. all progresses. From small acorns. Southampton to this wonderful venue right now, and it's a brilliant crowd tonight. I think they would go 60. wild if Adam Warner wins this. Very respectful, but when the scores are going and when Adam's playing, 96. I can hear him from here. Yeah, as soon as he went out, wasn't he? We could start hearing the singing and the chanting. 
that Alec is really making a move in this game. 160 points. Richard Veenstra has had an extra throw. Fear my concerns with uh, Richard this week. Atar's been the star performer when it comes to the conclusion sometimes. Should be 64, Richard. 93. So this is the type of chances, are they? 102. So he might stay there. He's got real options. They're, and they're purely the reason he stayed there was that fantastic opening Fifth. marker. Richard, you're required 48. Richard's campaign has to start. It has to start now with two darts at tops. Eight. And when it's not your night, you bend the wire not only once, but you bend it twice, Matt. you 52. Yeah, and this is an Game opportunity to break the, the throw. You can Alex see what Small. it means to Alec. We know what it means to Alec. It means a chance to get through to the semi-final. £1,250. The prize Alex money for to reaching throw the semi-final phase. And Game the off. hopes still alive of scooping the big one. £5,000 and the golden ticket. 30 but how many times have we said when you look through the stats, the form, and the data of Richard Veenstra, when he gets to that table when the chips are down, when he's running 60. up to that finishing line, he stumbles. Just not able to cross it. And it's not because of... When we talked about people like Michael Smith making the finals, it's not because people are really raising it against him. It's, his performance levels are dipping at that period. And Richard is av averaging in his 70s. I don't think I've seen that all week, really, with him. And Alec just needs to stay professional. And a term I've used so much this week, just keep it simple. You're in total control, Alec. If anything, look at your compatriot, Nick Kenny. He just seems to be in a, another zone. I can't even hear his voice next door with Nick. And, you know, last night I heard his voice booming all over. He's, uh, 60. he's got his game head on. We said at the start of the show, we cannot predict a winner. I think we predicted six different winners. 96. I think we predicted seven different winners, actually. There's only six players. But can you do it yet? Now we've hey, do you want this stage. Did you From my point of view, Matt, the two I said wouldn't reach the semis. I'm looking. Adam's certainly there. And the other one was, was Alex. So... My predictions continue to be as bad as 79. ever. 79. Hashtag do not follow, does it? Time it. 180. Absolute dart Bridget is about timing. And that 66 went from, I feel good. And this tops will be getting smaller by the second. 26. And that's what that 180 does to that. 24. And that knows exactly the situation. Game show my third leg. Advantage Alex small. small. Did have a chance earlier to chat to Mackenzie, young man who comes down every single well, Super Richard Series, a first. Super Series super fan. And I asked him, I said, who wins it tonight? And I always ask him that because the very first time I was down there, he came in to meet me and I asked him who wins and he told me who wins. And he was right. And I asked no, him again I and he was too. right. And today, he says, Leonard Gates... And then just as I was about to leave, he says, hang on, Matt, or Chris Landon. He, he, he was undecided. He wanted two picks. One of his picks has gone out. Chris Landman is still in the running. And I'd say at the moment, Chris Landman has probably been the better performer in that first phase of the finals. I'd argue Nick Kenny as well. So Landman and Kenny uh, have looked uh, 100. standout performers right now. But I said the standout performance, you could argue, was Adam Warner. So yeah, it's all to play for. Scratch everything out when it comes to the semi-finals. Forget the history. It's just about looking forward at that point. For me, if I was playing in this, just get to 99. the semi-final. You know, you can lose in the first round. You can't win it. 98. Richard, you've got 109. Beanstra is backs to the wall. We know he's got the class to turn this around. 69. But and does he have the time? to turn it around because this is match opportunity and that is a wayward dart for 42. Alec. 42. Richard, you've got 40. Fancy Richard to extend this match. You say you fancy it but he's not from six on the doubles. 20. 
Alex requires 70. Yeah, not from seven. And for the match. Go the name of the game is doubles. Match. And with a not from seven return, it's goodbye. But thank you to Richard Vincent for a wonderful week. But it's the young man in your picture there, Alex Small, who progresses to the semi final. What an outstanding chance the young man has got now. And there's the tail of the tape. Well done, Alex Small. And the semi finals are all done and dusted. We'll be back very, very soon.
promo, yeah. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. It's been a fantastic first year here at the Moda Super Series and we will return for 2023 back on air on January the 2nd, 9.30am, usual places, Sporty Stuff TV and the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. But to tonight, we've got three matches left to play for this year. And Glenn, it's been quite an incredible evening, hasn't it, to end the action for 2022? I think one of my job roles is to do some predictions and honestly, they've just once again gone out the window. Leonard Gates, Richard Veenstra leaving. Nah, it's a massive shock to me, that. Yeah, the top two favourites with the bookies, both knocked out in the group stages. Veenstra, the latest to do so. That after a 4-0 defeat at the hands of Alex Small before the break. Just didn't turn up in that one, did he, Flyers? But Small was excellent. Yeah, it's all about the doubles, isn't it? And if you look at the percentage there, north from seven, averaging in the 70s. That's not, not the Richard Veenstra we've seen all week. And uh, when he needed it most, it wasn't there. That's a story, really, of Richard Veenstra's career, in my opinion. Yeah, I kind of want to get your thoughts on nearly every player. So Leonard Gates first, he goes out, heads to Ali Pali. He just come, he just come to the venue so late, you know, and that was a that was a really strange thing, uh, and that, I think that affected him because you know he was up first. For me, he's the class act of the group. It, he just didn't deliver, and I was really disappointed in him. Now, no doubt who the supporters are here with tonight, Fabulous. Adam Warner, fantastic support. Uh, the support are great, and you know the. Adams keeps saying, just quieting down a little bit, and I just think, let them go. You know, this is it's just a, a, a real interest of an area, the uni dart. I've done a couple of exhibitions at the Trend Varsity, and they're crazy. They're mm. mental. You know, they make Ali Pali look like a, a church. Uh, so let them enjoy themselves, and Adam is doing a wonderful job. I'll ask you about Landman and Small in a moment, because they're going to play the first semi final. But yeah. just a word on Nick Kenny, because he has just breezed through. Yeah, I mean, which Nick Kenny's going to turn up tonight? It was the real one. For me, it's all about his eyes. He's got such a focus in them tonight. He's in a real zone, not acting the clown backstage. He was moaning about this and that yesterday. Today, I think he's been the class act so far. Right, it's all about £5,000 tonight, but also getting through to Champions Week. And we can take a look at the players that have already made it through the weekly winners at the Super Series in 2022. The second series, of course, the first was won by Conan Whitehead. Uh, Jim McEwen. Colin Osborne, uh, Alexander Merckx, Graham Usher, all players that are well known. But for me, the best player out of the seven was the one who won last week, Raymond Smith. Snap. You know, that, that would have been my answer if that was the question you were going to ask me. Obviously, I've got a favouritism towards Osborne and Usher because where I'm from. But Raymond Smith and I think he'll do really well tomorrow in a, in a match he's not even favouriting. Right. One of the four left in the field tonight will be number eight in that Champions Week lineup, and the first semi-final is about to get underway. It is a meeting between Chris Landman and Alex Small. Landman topped Group 1. Uh, he completed that Group win with a, a very convincing win over Adam Warner. He's been great, and he's not a name. He doesn't get the headlines, you know, just the type of personality is as well. Uh, but he's been fabulous from day one, and uh, blink and you'll miss it. And that's for Alex Small. Uh, do or die it was against Veenstra, and a really impressive comeback from losing his first game. He's a really nice kid. I've known him since he was a Welsh boy, even though I forgot who he was. Mm. Uh, it's big for him, and uh, like I said, he's upgraded to a turkey. Rizzler for his girlfriend tonight, and uh, yeah, they're all here, and I know his family are watching him. Well, let's get the semi-finals underway, shall we? Glenn Durrant is going to head downstairs to join Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Chris. And I wonder if that turkey sandwich is going to be upgraded to a little side of sweet potato fries as well because he's through to the semi-finals, which means he's now £1,250. And he'll be hoping to upgrade that even further. Chris Landman has upgraded his darts tonight. He's been playing extremely well running at an average of 93 and a half for the night. He's had a couple of 180s in there and also that incredible 161 finish. First leg, it's Chris to throw first. Game on. For Alec, he started his night off with a 
defeat to Nick Kenny, who did go on to top that group and win that one. Also beat Richard Veenstra 4-1, so a good night's work so far for Nick Kenny. But when the chips was down for Alex v Small, he v really produced in that game with Richard Veenstra. Not only did he win it, but he only missed one dart at a double in doing so. Nine, I do feel that this game, with the pace of it, is probably going to suit both players a lot better than when they were playing other people earlier on in the week. Yeah, great point. I think, obviously, we talked about having the right dance partner. 128. And these two both like to get on with it. We've been spoilt this week with quick players. 115. So just, Chris Lamb is just someone who doesn't get the headlines. Just quietly but effectively gets on with his job. And it's been a very professional job tonight so far. But that's a, another wonderful setup. 60. Which requires 77. He's so well tonight, isn't he? Just solid, getting an extra treble in each leg, giving himself that time on the finishers. Game shot in the first leg. Not something he's needing Chris too much Lander. of either because he's looking pretty ruthless on the outer ring. I feel all ruffled. I've just been dragged all over the place Second by the Alex Sheffield Posse. I've all just grabbed me a try to tell him I'm doing commentary 60. there, but they're ruffling me hair and laughing at me shirt. Yeah, just no emotion once again from Chris 60. Landman. Just gets on with it. He's won titles in the WDF, in the BDO. Aye, Even this year, he won the Northern, Northern Ireland match play. So he was Monday morning when he walked in, he said, Glenn, I'm playing the best darts of my life. 180! Talk is cheap, but he's backed it up all week. 86. The Alexandra Palace has just finished for the evening. A win for Dimitri Vandenberg. Three sets to nil over Lawrence Alargan. 100. And that is the darts completed over at the World Championship for another day. I thought we strictly come dancing the way they were cuddling each other. You know 80. everything about the cuddle, don't you? Richard 160. Andrew Gilden when you need him. 90. That 161 from Landman in the last match was uh, yeah, it was incredible. Just as the crowd were cheering for Adam One Warner. 100. Which requires 71. You look at treble, treble 13 here. That leaves a fat 18 for tops. Game is shown the second Professional. Leg. Clinical. Chris Landman. He's on a charge. He's on a roll. Is it Landman for the title? I was just Chris about to, to say the same thing. Game For the on. first time tonight, I feel like I'm watching a winner. And we did say, hey, when are we going to see Are we going to see that moment in the group stages where we've seen some very proficient performances? What and you just felt you were going to see a nod in your head. And you just felt that that was the moment. And he's not letting anyone 100. down. 100. He just gets on with it, doesn't he? He's just got a lovely attitude to the game, hasn't he? And it's been a long, long week. You know, Richard Veenstra looks exhausted in there. Well, obviously, a lot of disappointment. But for this guy, you think hey, he's got another five days left in him. Yeah, it looks like he's just arrived, doesn't he? He looks fresh. But this is... When we say we ask you questions about players, especially five. the young players or the players coming through, Alex Small has just gone 2-0 down to a guy averaging nearly 100. And then responds 180, 140, 170. That is quality. That is class. And that is what you're going to need when you start going up the Game levels. Game show the third leg. Alex Small. And that's a response, and it looks like the crowd have gone on his side, which is good. The Sheffield lot are, are really taken to Alec. Four Alec. Just joining to throw us first. after watching the Ali Pali tonight. Game on. In the group phases tonight, the two favourites, Leonard Gates, who's on his way to Ali Pali as we speak. And Richard Veenstra, the two top favourites, were both eliminated in the semi, semi-final process of the group. One hundred and forty. Now it's all knockout phase, and the semi-finals in earnest start now. With this game in front of you, Chris Landman came out the trap very, very quickly. But Alex Small has showed some response. So sit back, get involved with us at MSS Darts. Or at does a one eighty or at the Edgar. 501. 74. Interaction is important as we reach the finale of the week. It's been an unbelievable week, a week of ups and downs, trials 95. and tribulations. 
And that's just the commentary box. 100. This is some reaction, isn't it? This is brilliant. Just when you saw your winner, it's been that type of week, hasn't it? 60. So I you think you've got the answer? They change all the questions. Game show on the fourth flag. Alex Let's Small. Just sit back and watch with amazement. And look at that smile on his face. It's that getting that fine balance right. Fifth leg against Chris to throw first. And Game on. I'm not going to say down and out's the wrong term, but it was looking like Landman was going to be the winner. From absolute One nowhere. All of a sudden it's Alex Small. Well, what does Chris Landman do? Just pings a 140. 45. And we're just doing what he's doing. Quality affair, this. I feel like trying to find the winner of this is like just watching the ball in football when you're playing and he's following it round all over the place rather than looking at the, the pattern and the breakdown of the formations because it's just swinging side to side to side all the time. Oh, he's going to win, he's going to win, he's going to win. I don't think we have a clue who is going to win and that's what makes this such a good finals night. And I reference your very first hey, line of this match, Matt. 170. Styles could really suit each other. And I've just got a funny feeling they both like the pace of the game. You know, may the best man win. There's 90, no histrionics. There's no unsportsmanlike. There's no walking up to the board and walking across someone. This is just 59, a hard board game. And who's the best? You or me? And for tops, for the 3 2 lead. 32. Alex Require 100. Well, who is the best? This is the best. The biggest finish on the board. So when you hit a bullseye in the last leg, oh, that would have been huge. And you can see the reaction Chris of Alex Small. 40. Very close, impressive, great dart. But when it comes to who's the Game best in this Sean leg, it is Chris Landman. Because he has completed the full 501 points. Puts another leg on the board. And he's one leg away Sibling Alex to throw from first. a place Game on. in the Week 8 final. Alex Small needs both of these legs. Six. And that emotion from Chris Lamon is the most you're going to get. And if he does land that five grand prize. 140. Just a shake of a head from Alec at the behind him. He just needs to focus on his job. Don't watch hey, too much what your opponent's doing. Certainly don't watch this. Do not watch what Chris Landman is doing because he is hitting and hitting and hitting. An average of 95. Aye, that is team raising one. his running average for the night, which was 93 and a half. If he finishes over that 95, he's going to be on a 94 one average for the night. 180. We are going to have to start putting him in the headlines. We have no choice. One hundred over 98. Chris Landman, nice. Too shabby, 96. But it's double 12. Sixes. 75. I like it require 139. This would be some response. Chris Landman. 54. Two Chris options. Six. Two double two. Or straight where he looks at the board. No score. Wow. Alec, you Just when 85. you begin to write the conclusion of the book, that happens. And this is what I like. This is what I like. Refresh, go back. Go and there's times flag. when he can be Alex just a little Small. bit too aggressive, too quick with them darts. And I've asked him many times, just trial and error. Seven Stand and back, Alec Rob Cross. Walk Game to the on. hockey. That's, I really like that. Game on. Does that affect Chris 60. Landman? The first three darts all low. The first three Whoa, darts all in for Alex Small. This could be an amazing turnaround. He was 2-0 down. And Landman looking at he's going to race away with it. Then Alex Small starts finding some very inspired darts. I think the dart of the ball was probably 57. the biggest one. It's of the, the game. It's the smile on his face, Matt, that I'm liking. He's, he's enjoying it. He's loving it. It's okay having the experience of coming down here, but to perform on the night as well. And my mind takes me back to Richie Parkin being here a few weeks back when I know how much it meant to him. And I do know how much it means to Alec as well. This is great stuff. Nothing in it here. 85. 
Big moment. Biggest moment of the night. And that is fantastic darts from Alex Small. Still on. Treble 17. That would have been a harsh way to do it, but 66. 66 for the match. 66 for a place in the final. No. Just once again. 34. This Chris Landon can't 64. believe his luck. And it's 64. 16 for his beloved Tops. And he's finished in the same place as Alex Small. He just can't write this. Both 24. players have had opportunities. Both players have gave it back. Alec, you require 32. But now we are in a situation where both players are one dart away. Alec is taking his time. He's taking a breath. Go! You can Joe see Oliver! what it means. You can Alex hear what Small. it means. Alex Small turns that around in an absolutely brilliant semi-final clash that pretty much had everything. Interesting point there for Alex Small. Four out of five again on the outer ring. You give him a dart or a double, he is going to take it. Very impressive young man. Next, we have Nick Kenny taking on Adam Warner. Well, what drama here at the Modus Super Series. Alex Small, the first man through to the final after a real tense tussle with Chris Landman before the break. Uh, the stats were decent from Alex Small, 95 average for him, but the biggest moment came really in that last leg when he missed a big number, denying himself a match start. Uh, then Chris Landman 
did the very same thing. Small getting the win, 4-3, and moving through to the money match this evening. And the second semi-final is about to get underway, and you can probably hear that Adam Warner has got a fair few supporters in the audience this evening. Warner is going to take on Nick Kenny, and Warner has been playing up to the crowd tonight. We saw him produce a wonderful 180 earlier on and celebrate in style with his fans. And here it comes. The full build-up to it as well. Certainly got some swagger, and that's why the lad from Sheffield are cheering him on. So there we see the celebration, but Chris Landman, well, he had the last laugh in this one. He kept his cool, stepped forward, and cleaned up a 1-6-1. Brilliant stuff from him, but unfortunately for the Dutchman, he bowed out in his semi-final match. The opponent for Warner is Nick Kenny. Kenny has been in clinical form all evening. Uh, he has enjoyed a couple of 4-1 victories. I think we can see... Uh, the action of Nick Kenny this evening. A 120 checkout against Alex Small, who he could, of course, meet in the final tonight. He's dropped just two legs all evening. This Shanghai shot against Small, he won 4-1 against Veinstra earlier on, and then he went on to complete a 4-1 win against Alex Small with this brilliant 103 check. But Small has made it through to the final. Who will he take on? Will it be Warner to the delight of his supporters from Sheffield here in the crowd, or will Kenny carry on his fine form tonight? Let's find out in the company of Matthew and Glenn. Thank you, Chris. An absolutely fantastic game. Right, Alex Small, I'm absolutely delighted for the young man. Will he be joined by his Welsh compatriot? On the beat by Adam Warner with that wonderful, and I highlight the word wonderful crowd behind him. The, U, the Sheffield Uni guys are out in force. Sheffield darts are here. Sheffield darts are enjoying themselves. And your man is doing very, very well, but it's another step up in class right now because in front of you is the Welsh captain. But not just that, it's the guy who we fully expected to turn up tonight. He's in a right good headspace. He's feeling okay, good. Just a simple mannerism to there, nodding his head. Game on! And he'll go through his routine, and he looks very good. So, Warner, we've asked you for questions this week, and you've given us answers. This is probably the toughest question of the, of the week 60. for you. And good luck to you, sir. Well, he's been answering all the questions. You mentioned before about exams. This is the exam, isn't it? This is the... It's nearly the end of year exam because it's nearly the 100. end of week exam. So it's only one more examination to go after that, and that will be the final where Alex Small is awaiting following that victory over Chris Landman in the last match, 4 3. Six. What a performance that was from Alex. So whoever gets through this one, you have to make sure they are at their very best. It's A game time. Yes, Adam studied journalism. So will he be writing his own headlines? After tonight. Sixty. Can I put you on the spot, Matt? Because I haven't got any right, so I might as well just sit quiet now and ask you the question. I'll take the lead. This is good. 137. Well, he's took the darts from Nick. He's thrown second here, Adam, as being the guy who finished runner-up in his group. But what you do in that first leg when the nerves are there? Fools, he finds. Tension and anxiety and has to be considered, no matter how focused you are. This is superb stuff, Matt. Yeah, I thought it might have been a different question to that, but we'll, we'll go with that. It is superb stuff. Yes, you are right. That leaves a double after 12. Nick Kenny... This is what I mean when he's got that stall. He has that stall in the throw there, and then his shoulder, his body, the That'll shoulder comes past 32. the hip. It's very lungy to get that force going. He's Try again. He's going back to the Nick Kenny that we saw yesterday. 16. And I don't disagree with that. 
see the head drop down there, the arm. Yes, you're going to get darts that go in from time to time. But he needs to get more fluid within that movement. 16. Because more likely than not, it's not going to work for you. Can't get any closer than that. Eight. Wow. Yeah, that going in, that's Nick a great effort. 78. It's not success, and success is all that matters right now. Nick Kenny could hurt him here. No He's score. Lost. Dropping low. That is a sign of exactly what I'm saying with the stall in the throw. Tendency to drop low. He's gone for a big Adam 20. He's gone eight. in the treble. Bust that. And Adam now has another opportunity. He's already had six. We were very positive about his demeanour this Game week. Show him the first leg. Happy just to get over the line there, but a the couple of things I'm not liking. This is the bit he always does. This routine here of getting a glass of water, then he sort of Second stands back Adam's at the back of the hockey. Don't there you Game go. On. And then he goes through. So for someone with such inexperience, he's really got his strategy right of how he wants to throw a dart. The only thing I'm not liking with him is when Nick is doing his pacing up and down like a 125. I'm expecting farther, whereas this week he's just sort of stood behind and gone through his processes. So just something to keep an eye on. He just needs to keep his emotions in check. Whoa! Two things there. Process and outcome, both good. You got obviously the outcome of the 180. We can all clearly see what's gone on there, clear as day. But fluency in the throw, no stutter. No stop. 100. And I'd just like to see that movement continue. And if Nick Kenny can do that, he's going to be a danger to the title. And my stutter's not doing too bad yet. One Dare I get excited? Dare I get my paperwork out for a nine? Be your first nine dark call, won't it? You've probably just put the mockers on it now. 100. Nick no Rick bias 100 in the country box, but he won. Come on, Nick. Yes. No. Eight, he nine. Some wonderful dart and Nick Kenny. Believe it or not, he won't even be concerned about that. He just wants to get that leg back. Ah, no, the shake of heads there, so he was thinking about it. Well, for Adam, another ton again. Put some pressure on this 52, because when you're 1-0 behind, you have got a leg on the board yet, and how many times do you lose legs when you're missing a nine data? That could be on his mind. Has he cleared his mind enough? He 20. In the times, Matt, we have seen people on nine darters who lose legs is a huge percentage. For Adam Adam one, he done the right 36. thing after 12 darts, leaves 36. How do you feel for this? Takes his time, composes Game and delivers. And it's interesting you mentioned that has he cleared his head because actually for me there was lots of positive signs for Nick Kenny in that last exchange. So the exchange before like won the 78, to he went to the big 20 and bust it on the treble 20. From the shot of 52, he could have gone 12. It could have affected his process. He could have changed what his routine was 125. to try and leave tops. 12, he couldn't have had the opportunity of busting. He went for the fat 20. He stuck to his guns. He cleared his head. He believed in what he was doing. 20 for double 16. The first dart on the wire. The second one just hit the barrel, hit the dart, and came away. So... For me... Nick Kenny, right call. Ninety nine. One hundred. No panic yet from Nick. That's a sign of this maturity we talked about. Talking to himself, trying to G no himself to get back in the position. But for Adam Warner, remember what you said, Matt.
He's got no battle scars, that no, lack of experience. He's, he's got no real battle scars. He probably doesn't know what it's like to be on a, a real disappointment. He's just on a total high right now. And for me, this has been the success of the week. That crowd are absolutely magnificent. Full respectful. And I'm enjoying every moment of this. I know you, as a, as a commentator, but what a story this would be for the Moda Super Series. And also for the ADC as well, this partnership they have. And if they can tell a story of a guy who Nick decides to travel for 12 months via the ADC and look what can be achieved there. And, you know, he's going to write, as the journalistic guy he is, he is going to write his own headlines. And this is great. But Nick Kenny, I'll be saying, shut up, Durant. I've got my own job to do here. 84. Adam won't shut up Adam if this goes well, in. I expect we are going to see a Gerwin Price top draw style celebration if this goes. And he's got a dart. It's going to be at double 16. He's looking. Adam he's looking. Adam. And his fans are looking at the board. They are looking at that 106. It's a second breaker throw. He is one leg away well, from Adam one to mighty first. story. The Game guy on. who just 12 months ago watched the World Championship and says, I fancy a bit of that myself. This could be it for Adam Warner. What a story. What a journey. Can he keep this going and get himself through to the final 60. to play Alex Small? Boy, did you call that there, Matt. I got a bit of goose pumps there when the double 16 went in. I mean, I'm such a good friend with Nick Kenny. I'm just watching conflicting emotions from me because 100. you know that guy i've i talk to him regular i'm a big supporter and i've seen him really low i remember when we went to the antwerp open and he was really really low with his game so to see him both, i've shared a lakeside stage with him but what a story this could be for the motor super stadies this adam warner what did we know about him the, the kind of information i was trying to find out about him prior led me to competitions in Middlesbrough where he's been going. My good friend Andrew Dugan, he sits with him at the ADCs, was telling me what a really nice guy he is and how he's helped Andrew in the process. So but them fans are them fans, Matt, his fourth dart. Well, he keeps looking at them and he, you know what it's like. It feels great when you've got support, familiar faces, even just... He's probably been here all week and just being able to go out One with them this hundred. afternoon and spend a bit of time with them. You keep saying reset. That would have been a good reset moment. Just going out, spending some time with your friends in the afternoon, having that familiarity because this is all new. 60. And it could, Nick, you're in some cases, be a little bit daunting. That's a man who's not daunted by this task. I'm enjoying this match. Still don't think it's over yet. 64. Once again, I just love that statement you made. He hasn't had them huge disappointments. His dart and brain right now is all about positivity. He's loving every second of it. Sometimes, Matt, there's pressure when you get a group of players coming to watch you. Sometimes they can inspire you. And the fact they came, spent, you know, five hours driving there to be here today. But it's tops for Kenny. Game shown the four flag. Nick he's Kenny. been there, done it, he's got the t-shirt. He's won big opens. He knows what he needs to do. He's not going to panic Nick just yet. First. And let's Game be honest on. with you. He only needs one break. And that was the beauty of topping the group in the semi-final, in, in his group. 100. But right now, a 140 from Warner. Perfect, beautiful. That if there's any stress or nerves or anything in his body, 100. he's not demonstrating it. Yeah, that's what was mentioning as well. Like in those groups, groups one and two, in groups A, B, and C, you've used the term we get dead rubbers. You'd never get that in this because if you've got two players that are already three, three. it's always worth the playing for the advantage of the throw. Because in this short format, that's quite a sizable advantage and you might see it turn around in this game and see that advantage of throw coming into place but adam has completely different ideas average of 91 and a half 106 finish razor gun very tense at the motor super series finals night lots of talent and bottle one hundred and eighty. bottle personification just there 
Nick Kenny. This would be an amazing turnaround. He's not panicking. But to be fair, neither is this man. He's just getting on doing his job. Oh, what a response that is. He's treating this like a varsity match. Fifty-five. An untapped market we mentioned this week, Matt. One hundred and sixty. Absolutely, big fan of the university darts, and these guys are really showing you why. He's took out a one hundred and six. Go! What a yes! way to win it for Adam Warren! He really jumped completely off the stage. We asked him. We've got questions to answer. The biggest question was, can he beat Nick Kenny? Yes, he can, and he can do it in incredible style. A 160 finish for the match. He goes through to tonight's final, where it will be Adam Warner versus Alex Small. And that game will be in the next five minutes or so. This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
Uh, welcome back. Uh, we're all set for a thrilling final here on the last night of action before our break for Christmas. We are back on the 2nd of January, but Matt, uh, what a night it has been and what a final in prospect. A night of stories, the final of stories as well. I mean, Alex Small was the biggest outsider to win tonight, eight to one. Adam Warner at the start of the week was the biggest outsider of the week. 40 to one, the odds on him. You'll never get that on him again at the Super Series. Let's just have a quick look at how he won that previous match. The stats from that game. He beat Nick Kenny 4-1. Kenny had won both of his games 4-1. He was looking like he was just cruising through, but Warner gave him a taste of his own medicine. Wow, look at that. In the biggest game of your life, the biggest prize money you've ever played for, and the potential to go on to so much more, you throw a 96 average, 106 finish, and you win it with a 160. Wow is all I can say. It was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, uh, look, the night overall, Glenard Gates and Richard Vainstra, the top two favourites, they fell in the group stage, a turn up for the books in itself. The bookies have been bashed in terms of those favourites, or should I say the punters have been bashed on this one, because the favourites haven't performed. It's all been about the stories and the underdogs. I said the biggest outsider of the week is in the final, and he's just put in the best performance of the week so far. Yeah, if you are just tuning in, Matthew Edgar hasn't lost a bet. He did choose to wear that shirt, by the way. But look, let's look at the, the semi-finals now and how they ended, because it really is maybe the opposite outcome to what we expected. Uh, Alex Small beating Chris Landman in the first semi-final. Uh, the, the big drama in this one, forget all the stats, forget all of the first six legs. It was that both players missed big numbers, didn't they, before Alex Small hit this double 16. It just shows what it can do, nerves. It's just, yeah, nerves. It's just the tension. That's all that is coming through, but it didn't come through on the double. You saw that Alec really recomposed himself and got the, the job done. And Adam Warner, well, wow. What a way to seal it. And a few happy people in the crowd. He nearly joined them there, didn't he, as well? I thought he was going over the line. He nearly took a step too far and was on the front row. That lady on the front row nearly had him sat on the lap. He maybe thought there was Father Christmas out there. He's going to go sit on there. But really, really good way to do it. Not only getting over the line, but to do it in that sort of style, showing some true class. And the biggest outsider of the way. I so say, you'll never get that again. That has gone. We now know who Adam Warner is. Can he now come back on Champions Week? And it is the type of final, isn't it? It's two players that were not known much about. Small won the Champion of Champions. Warner, of course, an ADC qualifier. This could be a, a career-changing evening for either of them. I think it already is. In terms of they've come here on a, a global platform. They produce good darts. The viewers now know everything about these two. It's getting loud in here already. I wonder who they're going to go for in this one. Who are you going to go for? I'm going to go with Alex Small. I'm going to go against the crowd. Small is a call from Edgar. Right, the final is not far away, uh, but we're all feeling festive here at the Modus Super Series. <laughs> My favorite Christmas tradition would be waking up on Christmas morning, of course, uh, opening presents, and then once 12 o'clock noon comes, time to eat. <laughs> My favorite Christmas tradition would be opening the presents first. Favorite Christmas song? I think Mariah Carey. My favorite Christmas song is, I think, when? Last Christmas. Favourite Christmas song? Well, they're all awful, aren't they? Um, probably have to go. I think my girlfriend likes Mariah Carey, so all I want for Christmas is you. I'm spending Christmas at home and my girlfriend's. Hopefully. We'll see. Oh, I'm going to spend it in multiple locations, going around seeing all the family. Yeah, going to dot it around. Not at your house, though, am I? I like my garden shed. No, not a Christmas. Die Hard's not a Christmas film. Christmas film or not? Uh, a Christmas story, you're gonna shoot your eye out. <laughs> Me, wrapping presents, spells disaster. Absolute disaster. I'm pretty well known as an excellent rapper, actually. Be a smithy job like Gavin and Stacey, we just wrap it in tinfoil. Much easier. I'm Charlie? definitely I'm definitely not made for Christmas wrapping. Yeah, of course. Yeah, finished all my Christmas shopping. It's all ready to go, it's all wrapped up, um, miles ahead. I have done Christmas shopping. I normally start on Christmas Eve, but I've done a little bit. Um, nearly done. My favourite Christmas food would probably be Christmas pudding. Lovely stuff. Charlie? I think for me it's just got to be the traditional Christmas dinner. Um, some nice roast potatoes, bit of turkey, bit of gravy, can't go wrong. Oh my God. Turkey, uh, dressing, greens, 
yams, uh, sweet potato pie. Yeah, that 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 Christmas wreck. <laughs> oh, I like uh, pigs in blankets. I like meat, and I like my veg. Iedereen een fijne kerstdag. Ja, een vrolijk kerstfeest. Well, what a Christmas present this would be for one of our two finalists. No small matter of £5,000 and a place in Champions Week up for grabs. Can small succeed or will it be a Christmas win to Warner? Let's find out in the company of Glenn Duran and Matthew Edgar. What a wonderful week it's been here in Portsmouth. The city here Monday morning, 9.30, as the first dart is thrown to the conclusion right now. I was asked last night... Which two will not get out of the group? I said Alex Small and Adam Warner. The final tonight, it's Alex Small versus Adam Warner. My predictions have been absolutely useless. Hashtag don't follow the dozer. And I also feel robbed over that last video. I was told to be boring. I just looked like a clown. Okay, first leg it's Adam. And speaking of clowns, Matthew Edgar. Game on. The last game of 2022. It's the final of week eight. Alex Small, Adam Warner. Adam Warner winning the darts. This is the only game of the week that has a bull up. Adam winning that bull up in the practice room. Both these players very impressive 59. in their semi finals. And that is the sign of a good player. When the chips are down, when the stakes are raising, can you raise and bring out an even better version of yourself? Both of these achieved that and then some in their semi-final performances. No, seven. He's got ice through his veins, this guy, because my concern was he was on such a high 11, 12 minutes ago. 100. You've got to go backstage and then actually go back on. You know, for Alec, he's had 20 minutes to sort of just understand what the position he's in and, and sort of prepare himself ready. You know, Adam had all his crowd grabbing hold of him. He nearly fell off the stage. And I expect it to come out really slowly. But after nine darts, he wants one, two, four. 128. full of talent. I think Adam we can say now, we're at the point where we've got to stop questioning him. I think he's answered everything we need answering. He's shown every bit of quality that needs showing. And Go just continues to do so. 106. 160 for the match in the semi-finals. And then it is a 124 so finish. A 12 first. dart leg. This is from the man who apparently was 40 to Six. 1 at the start. It's not apparently. He, is. he was 40 to 1. He was a 40 to 1, the biggest out. He was 25 to 1 just to win his group. So I guess my job as a pundit, as a, a player who's been on the stage, 100. he will be walking on air right now. And the time of Christmas, I can't get that song out of my head as I say that, but he will be feeling an absolute million dollars. The battle he has right now is just the, um, the uh, controlling the emotions that, uh, in his body right now. Not to think of the winning line. And every time I begin to doubt him, he to 140. And he's unbelievable. Really, really, imp really impressed with both of these. 43. We're focusing on Adam because he's the one who's tearing away with this one in the early phases. But both of these players, mightily impressive. But Adam's just not stopping. 130. He's getting better. Incredible. Adam Warner. 98. You have a Adam new fan. 131. You can see this out. This is seriously impressive stuff. We can still do this. 51. I think it require 160. Interesting enough, the 160 is what changed the knife for Adam Warner. 128. What a setup, though. Adam, you require 80. Just keep the first dart straight. A fat 20 is not the end of the world. Sit on top of that. Take your chance. 
60. Alex Rock Second there, I thought that was in. We haven't mentioned much of Alex Small. Game is over. And it's 1-1. One, one. Alex Small. One thing I can mention about Alex Small is he's not missing doubles. He was four from five in game six when he took on Richard Beenstra. He was four from five Adams in his four-three victory in the semi-final against Chris Landman. And he's one from one here. Alex Small is not a man who is wilting under the pressure. But then again, 100. Same can be said about Adam. This is going to be a quality, quality final. 84. I'm Indeed. sure that family on the front right, I'm sure they're here every week. It was nice to see Luke Getty here tonight, so Luke, it's great that you've stayed around. I know you live locally, but just being here, that meant an awful lot to me, that to see you here. We'll be seeing you back at the Motor Super Series, I'm sure. And there he is, bottom left-hand corner there. You'd be thinking, if only that was me. He's so cool. I'm talking to my... Super League team, uh, as we you know, as we do the commentary here, and eighty-three. They were predicting Chris Landman at one point tonight, and then it's swayed, and you know they know Adam really well. That's where one I got my classic hundred. information of what do you know about him? Well, he wears chinos, and that's all I had to go on him. The creamy dream, and I thought tonight was going to be a nightmare. Far from it. But Alex Small, very, very proud of them amazing flights he uses there. I mean, we're going 154. Just continue to do, and he might not like the pace. That's the only thing I'm thinking of there. Another one leaves tops. And that leaves 78. 78. So if you're looking at the 18 bed, and once again, he's keeping it simple. That's what I like about him. He's not drifting into four of the one because you're putting too much pressure on that treble. But 60. Alex looks second best a lot in this game. You can tell that with the averages. Adam, he requires 60. But he's right in this. I'm impressed with Alex. I had concerns last time I saw him. He was just a little bit too raw. But our champion of champions has put on an unbelievable performance this week. And it's positive after positive. It's double 10. 50. And they're the kind of moments Alec, that Alex Small will be saying. Thank you very much. I'll take this. Sixty. Never the easiest double Adam is double five. Ten. And I think that face there was thinking two double four. But at this stage, I think he'd be thinking straight for it. Not a feeling. Adam and his response is my information I had is quiet, softly spoken. And I was getting messages. No on not on well, your Nelly, Alex is he? To throw first. Get him to do the Warner shuffle. He'll shout, he'll scream. I'm just my mind pitching at a varsity match now with other university guys. I've been there, I've done exhibitions at the Nottingham one, and the crowd go crazy, and he's feeding off that. But the most impressive thing about him right now is that it's not affecting him when he gets on that hockey. He is consistent, he's steady. 95. He's impressive. Alex Small, now it's your turn, young man. Yeah, both these players 61. have had success away from the Super Series. Glenn just mentioned there about Alec winning that Champion of Champions. And we bring that up a lot because I think that's a big title. I think it's one of the biggest ones outside of the PDC circuit. Adam Warner winning a Ryan's no, UK Open qualifier. He won that one in Liverpool, which got him through to the UK Open, which no, is a TV six. major on the PDC side. That experience might come in quite handy here for this one when it's one of those one-off matches. Certainly the final of that, when you've played all day, like he's been here no, all week. He too. That Riley's qualifier will go for about 14 hours. And when you get to that one match where if you win, you're through. If you don't, 40. it's like it never existed. He's something for you, Matt. Them two days he had off, he's coming here really fresh, really strong. I'm saying that Richard Vincent looked really tired tonight. And we had that conversation. Is it good to continue playing for the week? And it'd be interesting what Adam did no, for a couple of days. Did he just relax? I mean, he's a fit, healthy young lad. He could play darts for a month and it wouldn't affect him. But for no, Alec, that last four. half for Alec there just keeps him I in mean, this leg. 122. Beginning to run away with it there, Adam. And how many times have we said that this week? So treble 18. 
he'll steer that. And once again, he'll steer that. 54. I think we're going 124. It's not, it's not a gimme, 68. So this 124 doesn't have all the pressure on in the world, but he'll steer that. 56. They're just not getting them trebles now. Now it's about this type of finish. And if you've been with us 68. all week, you'll know the importance what we're talking about. These are the kind of finishers that professional players practice. They're on 64, 68, 72. Them type of finishers will happen four to five times in a match. Game four show. to five times, Adam Warner continues to impress. The guy is superb. The guy is impressive. You're brilliant, Warner, someone shouts. That's like the it's kind Adam's of help the crowd can give you. Advantage, Warner. Game on. He's a leg away. A leg away from the title. A leg away from Champions Week. A leg away from £5,000 in prize money. Said so these are the legs. This is the leg when the heart starts to pound. You can see the finishing line. Not affecting the performance. But this is where we're seeing Alec no, really kick five. in in times when his back was against the wall. He's produced some amazing darts. But when you have a look at the averages, there's a 15 point gap between the two at the moment. And unless that turns around quite 45. drastically. Gotta say that Adam should be able to serve this out and pick up his 45. biggest prize check of his life so far. And I say so far because I strongly expect that with darts like what we're seeing from him, he's going to be picking up many more checks in the next couple of years. Fifty eight. No treble in six there though. Was the damage done in the early stage? 134. For the first time, 70 a little bit of nerves here for Adam. There's nerves on both parties, I think. It's all getting a bit edgy now, and I'm not surprised. Neither of these, well, I say neither of them. Alex picked up a check for £10,000. You won the champion of champions. What are you on about, Edgar? For Warner, and big gulps of breath. I like big pieces of gold dust. Hey, it just T5. helps to control that adrenaline, which will be flowing through his body right now. The only good thing for him is Alex game just dip, but that Adam last dart by Alex Small there could be decisive. Leaves a two darter. And who is going to write off Adam Warner with this treble 18? And for the title, 89. I like you require one. See his followers, all eyes glued to the board, hands on heads. They might have to wait a bit longer. Alex Small's doubling, as we've already suggested, has been phenomenal. No, this is it. Three darts in hand. This is what you dream of on a Monday morning when you walk into here in Group A. Adam, you dream of 16. this position that Adam Warner is about to go and play in. The process hasn't changed. Look at the people in the back. That they, it, that's harder than the dart player. Double eight. What a dar for this young man. 12. Alec, you required 10. He does have a bit of breathing room on the scoreboard. Game's your but he's going to have to go back Alex to Small. 501 points and start all over again. Creamy dream. Sick flick, it's Alec to Has throw he just hit this first nightmare. With positivity and you will think, and I've had one opportunity. I'll get another one, but next time I'll get it. Look how quick Alec threw them darts there, and look how he bounced along the hockey there. He's thinking to himself, you've had your chance. Adam, you didn't take it. Now it's my time. And will, Alec, will Adam be thinking of them missed doubles now? It's all very interesting. Look at the pace all of a sudden. When we spoke earlier in the week, and we spoke about it tonight, there's got no scar tissue. 
this is where scar tissue is potentially formed if he does go on to lose this match those four missed match darts to win this match 4-1 will be the start of that if he doesn't process it in the correct ways 76 but he has the opportunity and how important would that bull in the back round be and the type of week it's been i can't take my eyes off the crowd at the back they're living every dart with adam five hours they've traveled down today and with support 95. like that five and i know how that feels turning around to see a mass of your friends and family just gives you that extra dart right now is he already thinking of the last leg decider the week we've had i think it would only be fitting to see the week decided one in a one leg shootout it requires however i don't think adam's going to want it to go that way and i certainly don't think that crowd are but if we get a double eight here from alec there's going to be no choice because that is what we're flag. doing a week that's had everything right, a week small. that's had tight groups a week that's had quality a week that's had its ups and downs it's been a roller coaster but there's only one direction Seven for it from now as it's coming it's into to throw the final part game on it's a one leg shootout and adam warner will be throwing first for the title and for the first time as a commentator nerves are in my stomach one i actually want them hundred. both to win imagine what this can do for your career to be a champion a champion to be a Moda super series weekly winner hey, to get five. yourself into champions week Voilà. Adam is finding when the what chips are down the maximum 74. visit 174. Just when you begin you. to doubt. Poses himself. The crowd are trying to compose themselves. One hundred. This is big. And look at them. I can't take my eyes off them. But respectful and must be respectful for when Alec is throwing. One hundred. And it's the pole. Hey, we require one hundred and twenty-seven. And game. Will he stay there? He's got old head on young shoulders. This boy. But hey, what a last dart that is. 12 darts thrown, 90. one double left, another Adam opportunity, he's had four 40. match darts already. But the process hasn't changed. This time, it's tops. This time, his opponent's on 1-2-6. Double 10. It's getting nervy. It's 30. getting very nervy here in Portsmouth. I think you require 126. And all on the 19s. He needs four 19s for the ball. That's one. That's two. That's not enough. So 54. Adam Warner will return. Double Adam five. Required He's 10. had seven match darts already. They hold their heads. They hold their breaths. Adam holds the dart in the throwing hand. Go! The perfect Xmas present for the rank Super outsider of the week. What a Adam story. Warner. What a week for Adam Warner. And the noisy, vociferous crowd gather round. So impressive for Adam Warner. I knew nothing about him until this week. And that is absolutely amazing. The journalist has wrote his own headline. Matt, what a week. I'm shaking here with excitement. That's how good of a game that was. What a story for the young man. I don't know if he knows what to do. Adam Warner literally was the biggest outsider of the week. He came into this. He was 40 to 1 outsider to win the week, 25 to 1 to win his group. He has just gone and done it. He has achieved what thought was the unachievable. And he's done it in the, the most dominating style he won group a and then he's come back and he's won the title as well he has only been beaten three times all week brilliant performance adam warner he is the winner of group eight and we're going to hear from him right now with chris murphy 
We are, yeah. I think there's a little bit of uh, emotion in this room. Uh, thanks, Matt. Adam, yeah. uh, just try and sum <laughs> up your feelings. Uh, you came here um, this week, pretty unknown to most yeah. viewers. They certainly know who you are now. Yeah, just even even coming into tonight, just, just thinking, just get through the first round, try and get to semis. Uh, yeah, to, to win it. Yeah. yeah, I can't really put it into words, Chris, to be honest. Yeah. And, yeah, it's just, I'm all over the shop. I'm all That's over the, the only shop. mistake it's you've yeah. made all evening. Yeah. Yeah. How, how good, how much have it's these been It's just absolutely fantastic, tonight? these guys. And um, yeah, Sheffield Union, they've driven down four or five hours to be here. We've got all these lads. <laughs> Did it, did it make a difference for you? I think it did, especially in, in the first game against Dumb Leonard. Having it behind me, we've got Dave and Becky who are playing pub league with, come down from Derby, just sent me a message at four o'clock this afternoon. Spontaneous decision, we're coming down. I was like, that's absolutely mental, coming down to Portsmouth to, to watch me play darts. Like, I, I can't, yeah, yeah, can't what, believe it. What are your aspirations yeah. as a darts player? You've been here with some of the, the players that have graced the biggest stages. Leonard yeah. Gates is going to Ali Pali next week. What, yeah. What's the future hold for you? Um, just, just, just keep trying to go to tournaments, try and win them. Uh, so I might have to. I wasn't going to go to Q School. I was going to give it another year of sort of playing ADC stuff and some have come back here. But I might, I might have to reconsider now. We'll have to, we'll have to see. I have to decide in the next week or two. But yeah, just yeah, incredible. Can't believe honestly. Yeah, can't believe it. Can't believe it. And five thousand pounds. It's a nice Christmas <laughs> present, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just even even saying that sort of. It's, he sort of quadrupled my net worth. <laughs> <laughs> mad, absolutely mad. Right, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, Cheers, thanks Chris. everybody for watching, not just tonight, but for the whole of 2022. We'll return on the 2nd of January, 2023. Uh, and Adam Warner has just ended our year on a high. It really is this evening at the Super Series, a Warner Wonderland. We'll let you go and celebrate. Oh, yeah!